Santa Griff football is on the air. Brought to you by Covert Cadillac GMC, CW Print Services, Dr. Crawford at Austin Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, by Chris Province CPA, Rock Solid Building Services, Kim Krant Allison Realtor with Caldwell Banker Realty, Texas Family Physicians, Eric Silvis at Guaranteed Rate Mortgage, by Texas Malibu, Big Red Car Wash, South Star Bank, Bartlett Real Estate, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, HD Realty, Chicken Express, Independence Title, by Lake Travis Pizza, Patty Jones Photography, Card My Yard, by Aaron Turnley with Caldwell Banker Realty, Four Points Rugby Club, Mighty Fine Burgers, Fries and Shakes, Tomlin Family Orthodontics, Dog House, and by Austin Advantage. And now, alongside Scott Schaffner and Hank Hudson, here's the voice of the Vandergrift Vipers, Merle Bertrand. Good afternoon and welcome to Vandergrift Vipers Playoff Football on the ABC Home and Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. My name is Merle Bertrand, coming to you live from the Cabanas Athletic Complex in Corpus Christi, Texas. Joined once again by Hank Hudson along with Zach Lucero, our engineer and sideline reporter, Aaron Anderson back at the studio. Scott Schaffner out of town for the holidays. I know he's tuned in. Uh, he's getting ready to watch his alma mater visiting his parents up in the great white north. And uh, guys, the Vipers coming off one of their best performances ever against a very good steel team last week. There's a very good chance the defending state champion Wells State Chaparrales will await them in the next round. But first, they have to get past an undefeated Edinburgh Valley team. The Vipers cannot afford to overlook the Sabercats here this afternoon. Yeah, no question, Merle. Here we are, round three of the Texas high school football playoffs. 6A, the top uh, classification in the state of Texas, Division II. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, these, uh, these encounters take on more meaning. It becomes an epic situation where you've got these two communities traveling, say a tale of two cities, when right. you get the uh, the human drama of athletic competition happening. And you know, Vela comes in here, they're 11-0 uh, of an offense that's extremely explosive. They operate at an extremely fast pace. They've got their main man, number one, Pablo Rivera. Their defense, Merle and Zach, is only allowing seven points per game. Uh, Vander Vandergriff comes up uh, after a win, which, like you said, it made a little bit of a statement win. Uh, over a very, very story to steal program. So on paper, perhaps if Vanna Gift is focused, is, is favored, but for, for them, it's not going to be any hocus pocus. It's just right. focus. They need to <laughs> focus on playing Viper football, and I think things will f turn out favorably. And uh, Zach Lucero, I didn't even ask Coach Sanders this. We'll hear from Coach in a minute because I knew what he was going to say. But if you look up trap game in the dictionary, this one's it. Yeah, especially, especially coming off of the win that we came off of last week. Um, it kind of sets you up double. A team, yeah. not only is it a team that on paper you should beat, but you're kind of coming off an, an emotional victory, a, a victory that you were kind of on the opposite side of this, a game that you maybe weren't supposed to win. Um, so I, I think that the odds are stacked against Vandergriff in terms of um, the kind of the schematics that create an upset. Um, but that being said, this is a game that Vandergriff should win, and hopefully they can take care of business and, and, uh, and keep on rolling through this really good playoff run that we've started. And uh, what a beautiful day here down at Corpus Christi. It's about 65 degrees or so, maybe pushing 70. Uh, you know, it's kind of some wispy clouds, but we've been real lucky with football weather. It's just a gorgeous day here this afternoon at Corpus Christi. It shows how big Texas is when both teams have to travel at least three, three and a half hours just to meet in the middle somewhere. Absolutely correct. And this is a really nice facility. It's a little older, but the field is in, looks beautiful. And, you know, here in the part of uh, the coast of the Texas coast, Corpus Christi, Humidity is a little higher, but 65 degrees, you couldn't ask for a better day. Yeah, a, a nice drive on the way up here. Definitely uh, less eventful than the one to San Antonio, <laughs> but hopefully, we'll get, hopefully we can get the same result. Bro. Absolutely. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll hear from the head coach of the Vanity Good Vipers talking about last week's big win over Cibolo Steel, setting the table for this matchup against the Sabercats from Edinburgh Vela. You are listening to Vanity Good Vipers Football on the ABC Home and Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network.
Become a Vibe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe news throughout the entire year subscribe today what are you waiting for it's less than a cup of coffee a month become a vipe insider $2.99 a month $23.99 for the whole year hey it's vipe we will see you at the games Yeah, we're pleased to be joined once again in the pregame show by the head coach of the Vandergrift Vipers on this Thanksgiving week, Coach Drew Sanders. And, uh, Coach, first off, congratulations. That had to be the most dominant and oppressive performance by a Vipers team that I've seen. They just dismantled a really good, previously undefeated Steel team. Where, where does that performance rank in your mind of, of the Vipers' uh, short history here? Well, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, you know my personality. I'm not up for ranking or reflecting in season. Um, you know, that's kind of stuff I like to do at the end of the season. But I just know as I was watching the performance, it was an impressive performance. We came to ready to play. Um, we executed our game plan on all three phases. And, um, and not, on that, not only that, but against an excellent opponent and at their home stadium. Right. Um, and so I'm very impressed and, and um, excited to um, see us continue to build upon, you know, the, the momentum that that created. Yeah, it didn't take us very long to get out of the stadium at the end of the night, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> you guys have been flirting with it all season long, and you finally got your shutout. Is it just me, or is this defense almost like an extension of the offense? And what I mean by that is so many tackles for losses, so many sacks, turnovers, they really give the offense that doesn't need a lot of help a short field to work with a lot of, a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, we, we, have, we have done a great job of, um, you know, really just filling our role. I'm not sure we – you know, are the most talented defense we've ever had, but I just know that they work well together. There are a bunch of guys that fly around, and, and they are all uh, pretty good tacklers too, which is a big thing. Um, so, yeah, and they, they believe in our game plan. You know, they're as coachable as any group I've ever had. And so when things go wrong, and that can't be underestimated with the fans that are listening, when things go wrong, um, I've been coaching a long time. There have been teams, and not just I've coached all kinds of different places, not just at Griff where sometimes you go to the sideline and they're not so sure about what you're saying, and then they go out and then they make the same mistake. You know, while these, these, these guys on, on this team overall, um, but particularly since you're asking defense, when we make mistakes or when we do, you know, things that are wrong, they're just so ready to say, well, well how do we fix it? And then right. they go try to do their best to fix it, and that's, that's invaluable. Well, the, on the other side of the ball, the Viper offense is kind of a, a multi-headed hydra. Do you make a conscious hold effort sometimes in the game to maybe showcase all the ways you can score just to you pause? Give, you know, cause headaches to the uh, opposing coaches? Can we pause real quick? Yeah, yeah. Somebody's knocking on my door. Pause. One second, Uh, booster club. Oh, dear <laughs> Lord. I've never had this many people knock on my door. Right. <laughs> what in the world? Nobody knocks on doors anymore. I know. Second. Okay. Kind of makes you suspicious. Hey. Hey. You got to see. Hey. Okay. Cool. Get to rest their starters a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, they're, they're going to come out fired up. They're a very confident group. And 12 0 is no accident. Um, and so they'll they'll be they'll be everything we can handle for sure. I remember distinctly playing them, and I yep. think I personally underestimated them last time we played them in 15. 
and just thought we would just beat them just because everybody says that you know Austin should be the Valley team and that was you know just a critical error on my part we we um barely got out of there with a win and so we're going to be prepared we're going to understand and respect our opponent more this week and hopefully have a good performance well i don't think that's just you i think a lot of people then and i'm wondering if they might have a little bit of an extra chip on their shoulder because they're tired of hearing about how the valley teams can't compete with everybody else yeah that probably does factor into them um, but we've got to carry our own chip you know and, and right. make sure that we we've, we've got um, a score to settle we've got things to accomplish and um and so hopefully we'll you'll see that kind of team show up on, on Friday afternoon. Well, you really get a sense of how big Texas is when you got to travel four hours just to meet in the middle somewhere. I, I know this is sort of a, you know, it's a business trip and that kind of thing, but it is a holiday. It's just a special time of year. How much do you guys, you and the guys enjoy these kind of road trips? Well, we love them. I mean, this is what you, this is what you work for all year. Um, I mean, you truly are dreaming of this when you're in the weight room in January and February. You, you can't wait to get to do this kind of stuff so it is not missed on me you know especially the older i get and the, the more experienced i get in coaching you're kidding uh, how much how much i enjoy um, coaching on thanksgiving and trying to play in, into december and you know all those goals and, and seeing kids reaction there there is nothing like a playoff win celebration with the team there's truly nothing like it to me in the world um, and so, you know, that's what we're striving for and, 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 um, and working towards every single day. So, I, yeah, we, as a coaching staff, we're fired up. We're, we're thankful we get to coach the kids we coach. And, and um, we're ready for another day of practice tomorrow. Well, looking forward to making the trip down. Looking forward to the game on Friday. Any final thoughts here, Seth, Coach? Well, you know, I hope, you hope the, the fans eat, eat some turkey and, and load up on some pecan by Thursday and then get ready to go um, on Friday and actually make the drive down and, and cheer us on. That sounds good. Thank you, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll see you on Friday. Okay, see you Friday. Vanderbilt Fiber said Coach Drew Sanders, a guest here on the Free Game Show. We'll take a break and be right back. You're listening to Vanderbilt Fiber's Football on the ABC Home and Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. Live inside AT&T Stadium, all battling to be crowned champions. Get your tickets now for the UIL State Championships. Be a part of this Texas tradition. Log on to SeatGeek.com. The light shines on local students making their mark. We grind as brothers and we won as brothers today. We just have each other's back no matter what. See what it takes to be the best in class. High School Spotlight, Sunday on Valley Sports Southwest. And welcome back to the Cabanas Athletic Complex. The Vanderbilt Fibers entered today's game at 11-1 overall, coming off their 38-0 shutout of steel last week. The Edinburgh Vale Sabercast champions out of District 31-6A opened the playoffs with a 17-7 win over San Benito, then held off San Antonio Taft 27-24 last week to run their record to a perfect 12-0 overall. As you see the teams gathering out there in the center of the field for the coin toss. And, uh, Hank, uh, we were kind of speculating before 
the coin toss? What what would happen? How did it all shake out? Well, you know, I didn't uh, I didn't catch it, Merle. We're busy in here with the uh, Zach Lucero and his engineering board, but. Uh, if we won the toss, I'd, the, the good big money is on uh, Coach Sanders to defer. That's what he usually does. Zach, he likes to get that defensive unit out there and kind of set the tone. Yeah, especially the way that, this, that the defense has been playing the last couple of weeks, really kind of setting the tone for the offense. We saw kind of a, a, a tale of two halves of the season for the Vipers. The first half was really offensive driven, and the defense really came alive and, and started playing, as uh, Coach Sarkeesian likes to say, complimentary football. Exactly. Uh, second time, Vandy Gift and Vale have met in the postseason with the Vipers defeating the Sabercats 49-39 to in a then 5A regional semifinal matchup, uh, matchup back in 2015. Coach touched on it in the interview. It's all too easy to under uh, underestimate the Valley teams, but this is a team that's won 11 games 12 counting a forfeit, so Vipers cannot take anything for granted this afternoon. That's absolutely right, Merle. This is an 11-0 football team that's got a proud tradition. They got a big win last week over San Antonio Taft, and I'll tell you what, I'm so impressed with the fans from uh, Vela, the Vela Sabercats. They travel, they, they travel extremely well. This atmosphere is going to be electric, Merle. And the ball is in the air. We are underway from Corpus Christi, and a short kickoff fielded at the 15-yard line from the far sideline the 20 to 25 and spins out to about the 28 yard line. Reese Beecham on the return. Vipers go on left to right. They'll get the football first. They are the home team in this ball game. So black jerseys, white pants, silver numbers with the black helmet and the silver chrome trim. Edinburgh Baylor, the visiting team, white jerseys and pants, blue numerals, black helmet with blue trim. Vipers going from left to right. The Saber cast defending from right to left. And we are underway from Corpus Christi. Vela comes out in that 4-3 defense, the base 4-3 the two high safeties. Look for Coach Mauser to have some plays in the playbook to attack that today. First down and 10 from the 27-yard line. Vipers going from left to right, empty back set. Pass over here to the right side, going for a big play early on and incomplete. Trying to get it out to Ryan Shepard, who lined up as a wide receiver that time, and it falls incomplete, second down and 10. Pretty good coverage that time, Earl, for number yeah. six, Matthew Luna, a senior defensive back. Did a good job turning and running with... The receiver had a little hand fighting going on. Second down and 10, just underway. First possession of the ball game for either club. Beecham, handoff up the middle. Shepard back in the more traditional spot of the backfield and he's gonna push it out to about the 30 yard line. Gain of three on the play, third down and seven. Well, the game has already started off with some competitive intensity. We see big number 72, Ian Reed, having some combat with his counterpart across the line. Vela came to play. Yes, they did. Trips wide right, one of the near side, a uh, far side. Vipers going from left to right. Clouds are really rolled in here as we head towards twilight. Dropping back, Buchanan looking, firing over the middle, ball batted up in the air, and I think it fell incomplete. About three or four guys had a shot at it, but it's a three and out forced by the Sabercat defense. Not the start the Vipers hoped to get off to. No, not at all. They took a shot downfield and first down, so definitely that's going to be something that's going to be part of the game plan, so we'll look for some more of that later. But the Sabercats, like I said, they they don't do too much too too, too much fancy work on defense. It's right. going to be a straight 4-3, so let's see what happens here. That's going to really set the punt away. Low snap, rugby style punt. He fields it on the short hop and gets a pretty good boot away to the right side. Fair catch called for and made at the 33-yard line. Hauled in there by Justin Navarro, and that's where the Sabercats will take over first down and 10. Vela averaging 41.9 points per game, 353 and a half yards a game, led by senior quarterback Chase Campbell, 111 out of 179, 1,664 yards, 23 touchdowns, six interceptions, two running backs in the backfield. Quarterback Campbell doesn't run at all. No, but he's got a big arm, and yes, he, he just does. likes to distribute. He goes to number one, Pablo Rivera. Anywhere he's lined up, you can expect him to throw it to him if he's lined up wide, or they'll just hand it to him. Also, number four, keep an eye on Justin Vega. And off left side and breaking one tackle. Can't get by the second one. Alex Foster there to clean it up. Going to be no gain in the play. Second down and 10. Well, the host of Vipers there for that stop is we've become accustomed to Merle number 42, Oliver Yendo. The Lone Ranger number 13, Clayton Moore. He's one of those guys never far from the action. Right. And here we see this up-tempo Vela offense. They're going to go in a hurry all day. Second down and 10. Two receivers wide right, one on the near side. Moving from right to left. Wind blowing from left to right. The breeze is picked up as the afternoon is worn on here in Corpus. Campbell dropping back. Pressure coming, spins out of it, and he's got, that's going to be grounding. That's got to be yep, grounding. That There's comes the flag. flag. Coming in in a hurry was Slater Swartwood, 
And he got a hold of Campbell, spin him, spinning him around. The quarterback just kind of spiked it. Well, that's a big penalty right there that because is. now you're going to move back, lose the down. On uh, You're going to take the penalty yardage and lose the down. So instead of punting from your, your own 33 or 34 yard line, this punt is now, that's going to cost him, cost him some yards all the way back to the 20. Yeah, that'll be third down and what, 25? Or third and 50, yeah, third and 25. A chance for the Viper defense to get off the field just send away 10 18 to go opening frame. All right, we're sitting right amongst the fans. This is going to be a fun football game for everybody here. Dropping back. Campbell under pressure again, rolling to his right. Got some running room. And now he's going to tuck it under, try to get what he can get. And he slides down there at the 25 yard line. There to make sure he stayed down was Max Ewell. So already two of the three big guys on defense, Swartwood and Ewell, have uh, made their pressure felt. I shouldn't say three guys, it was about five or six guys. <laughs> Yeah, so well, that's something we've grown to come to expect from this Vipers defense. Yeah. Well, they, they really swarmed the football. That's one of the hallmarks of Coach Sanders' defense. They play fast and furious. Vandergriff Vipers defense. Fourth and 19, Justin Vega. Senior wide receiver set to punt it away here for the Sabercats. Two of the better names in high school sports, the Vipers and the Sabercats going at it here in Corpus Christi. High booming punt, the wind's gonna knock it down a little bit and Reese Beecham hauls it in at the 40 yard line. So the Vipers, so far, with the advantage in the field, uh, field, field position. position so far, but uh, so far everybody's holding serve and right. reduce. It's early, but this is definitely much better starting field position for the Vipers. Junior quarterback, Braden Buchanan, coming in 18 out of 26 last week, 237 yards. 150 out of 236, 2,627 yards, 37 touchdowns, just four picks coming into the game. First and 10, Vandegar from their own 40-yard line, moving from left to right. Shepard settles in the backfield right side. He's going to get the handoff, bounces it off right tackle, and spins out across the 42-yard line, a harder and couple of yards there for the senior running back. Second down and eight. Boy, Vela plays fast on offense and defense. A lot of quickness on the field. These early encounters, Merle, feel something like, like a heavyweight championship, right. a boxing match. Both teams testing each other. Play action pass. Buchanan fighting over the right side, trying to get it down to Grayland Spring. A lot of contact, no flag. And again, co good coverage down the field by Matthew Luna. Vibers have taken a couple of shots. They must have seen something that they like, but so far the Sabercats have been up to the task. Well, it looks like we're trying to throw deep to the outside so the, those two sa high safeties are really defending that middle part of the field so like I said I think that's something we're going to see throughout the evening I don't like your chances on hitting one of those third down and eight ball spot at the 42 yard line moving from left to right trips wide left Buchanan rolling left and shuttle, shuttle pass underneath the Shepard reverse the field to the right side of the 45 across the 50 bounce to the outside of the 45 and knocked out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Pretty nifty play design there. Yeah, extremely nifty. That was a handoff, so yeah. we're going to uh, not, a, not, a, not a toss. Misdirection play. Shepard spun. The 180 ran back the other direction. Almost got gobbled up in the backfield by number 44. That's Ethan Aguirre. Now Shepard up the middle, picks his way, and spins inside the 45 down to the 44-yard line. Yeah, almost very much a delayed counter play in that previous play. Well, when you got speed on defense, that's something offensive coordinators will tell you. You get them all running one direction fast, get it going the other way. But Bale is putting up a pretty good fight on the interior. The line of scrimmage is highly contested so far. Second down and nine. Two receivers to the left, one to the near side. Alex Witten, the ball game. Now he gets his first carry. He's straight ahead and running down to about the 43 yard line. Short pick up there. It's going to bring up a third down and seven after the gain of two. Yes, yeah, very much uh, these early rounds, Merle, the heavyweights are trading jabs. Right. It's going to be interesting to how this game develops. Vela looks, Vela looks well warmed up and ready to play. Inside of eight minutes to go, third and seven for Vandergrift. Coleman comes in motion right to left, dropping back Buchanan. Fires over to the left side, got a receiver, caught. Great oh. spring down to the 25-yard line, first down Vandergrift. What a great looking pass and catch. He had to climb the ladder a bit. Is that Spring or is that yeah. Beecham? That's actually Beecham and he is down on the carpet at the 25 yard line. Took a shot after the catch. And the Vandergriff side of the field got dead quiet. Well, we want him to get up. Uh, 
My goodness. Climb the ladder to make a great catch. He's sitting up. That's a good sign. Yeah. Hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him. I think that's probably what happened. You're, you're a little, you're exposed when you go up like that and climb the ladder. So any kind of contact and you're going to land on your shoulders and your shoulders and, and head first. So likely he got the wind knocked out of him. Comes off the, trots off the field, takes a swig of Gatorade, probably took a chomp out of the bottle while he was at it. He's ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll see him out for one play. Great catch. Yeah, that was an amazing catch. Perfectly de delivered football there by Braden Buchanan, the Baylor baseball commit. First down, Vipers. Beach him. It's his 51st catch, over 1,000 yards on the uh, year now on the receiving side. First and 10, Vipers at the 25-yard line of the Sabercats. Drive started on their own 40. Hand off. Shepard, left side, spins. Stays on his feet and took an extra shot or two, but picked up about three yards on the carry down to the 22-yard line. Second down and seven. So to keep the boxing analogy going, Murrell, those are body blows. Those inside runs to Shepard, you know, just kind of wear you down over time. Right. He gets stronger as the game wears on, that's for sure. Mm, that's, that's correct. And he takes it off right tackle this time. And Dragon Tackler sits down at the 25-yard line. Another two-yard pickup. That will bring up a third and five. Third and five is a good down and distance for any football team. Just want to stay out of anything longer than that. So Viper's operating with some tempo right now. No huddle. This game will go fast. We keep up this pace. <laughs> yeah. We're already inside of seven minutes to go. 640 to be exact. Third and five for the Vipers from the Vela 25-yard, 20-yard line. Tristan out of the right side. Buchanan, play action, fires right side, and incomplete. Jump on the route, almost with the interception with Justin Navarro. They try to get it to Coleman, who was lined up in the slot. Bodies went flying, the ball fell to the carpet. It's fourth down and five. Well, this will be interesting to see what we do here. We've got a kicker who can make this field goal. Vipers look like they're going to go for it. Fourth and five from the 20. Big play early here in this drive. Coleman comes in motion left to right. Buchanan dropping back. Looking. Pump fake. Fires right side. Into the end zone. Caught Touchdown. Touchdown. Vandegrave. Wow. Reese Beecham right back in the ball game. Got behind the defense. Climbed the ladder again. The Vipers draw first blood. Man, that catch was better than the first it one. Was, wasn't it? I mean, apparently you're right. He got mad after he got the wind knocked out of him. <laughs> and came back in and made uh, just an unbelievable catch. That ball was a little high. And that's, an e that's not an easy thing to do, Merle, when you're right. running full speed one direction, looking over your shoulder, and you've got to climb that ladder. Very athletic play by Mr. Beecham. On for the extra point is Hayden Arnold. Out of the hold of Hudson Lilly. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. And the Vipers draw first blood as he stays perfect down the year. 6-19 to go. Quarter number one. Vandegrift leads at 7-0. We'll take a break and turn it over to the defense. You are listening to Vandegrift Vipers football on the Austin Radio Network. All right, after a three and out on the first drive, the Vipers drive at 60 yards and take the go-ahead score, seven to nothing early for midway through this first quarter. And the kickoff is gonna be sailed back to the five yard line field to there up to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. To the outside and a good open field tackle there at the 25 yard line by a swarm of Vipers. First down and 10 for the Sabercats. So the, the boxes went at it 
but uh, the Vipers uh, finally get the knockdown. Not the knockout yet, Hank. Hudson, Not the knockout. The, knock, the knockdown, anyway. Knock, but I'll tell you what, the, the key to that drive, Merle, uh, the ABC Home and Commercial Services drive summary, 10 plays, <laughs> 60 yards. The key were three big plays, a big uh, third down run by uh, Ryan Shepard and then two pass completions to the guy who can catch BBs in a hailstorm, Merle. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Reese Beecham. That's exactly right. First down and 10, handoff right side, and disappears into the pile, falls out to about the 30-yard line, about a five-yard pickup there for Pablo Rivera, his first look on the football, second down and five. Senior running back for Edinburgh Vela. And here they are, they, they operate fast and furious. Gonna give it to him again, left side, and this time, gonna be stacked up at about the 33-yard line, gain of about three yards on the play. Looks like Tucker Harrison got a hold of an arm and held them up a little bit. Third down and two. Yeah. Once again, a host of Vipers. Spencer, Erm Spencer was there, number 47, Emerson. Sterling Emerson, I'm sorry. The lights are coming on here at the stadium. Third down and a long two from the 33-yard line. Wildcat to Rivera, and he's going to have the first down up to the 39-yard line. Maybe fell forward to the 40. And Vela moves the chains. First down and 10. Well, that's a look we're going to see some more of, I think, tonight. Yep. He is their feature running back, feature receiver. Does a little bit of everything, number one. That's Pablo Rivera. And off the other running back. Out across the 45 to the outside of the 49-yard line. About a nine-yard pickup that time. That is senior running back Ted Galvan. Well, Vela caught us that time, Merle. Uh, we're in the midst of some kind of shift over to the left side. Caught us. They snapped that ball right as we were shifting. Galvan again up the middle and looks like he got it just across the 50-yard stripe. That'll be good for a first down and three-yard pickup. And the Sabercats have a good drive of their own going here. And this is the look from Vela. We're not going to see much more. Number 27 is Mr. Inside. Number one, yeah. Rivera is Mr. Outside. First and 10 Sabercats into Viper territory for the first time this afternoon. Lights coming on. Beautiful field turf here. Play action. Campbell rolls to his right under pressure, and he's going to go down. That's going to be another, another grounding. Oh, they're saying he's down. They're going to call him down first. Okay. Coming in backside, though, for the Vipers to get the sack was Oliver Indo. Yeah, I think that's – he's a defensive end on that side, so he just did a great job of playing that gap integrity, that something that Coach Sanders is – his teams are so well-disciplined, world on maintaining their gap commitment and where they're supposed to be. So that time, Indo was the edge player – Lined up and committed uh, committed to it perfectly. Big time tackle for loss, number 42. Second down and 19 from the 41-yard line. Dropping back. Campbell dumps it off screen pass to Rivera. To the 45, wrapped up, and he's going to be dropped right there after a gain of about three yards on the play. Jackson Oliver riding him like a calf at a rodeo. Man, he just looks strong. I mean, when you see a guy make a tackle like that high and just look like he body slammed him. <laughs> yeah. Third and 16 from the Sabercat 45-yard line. Four minutes to go. First quarter, Vipers up by seven. Two receivers wide right. Dropping back. Looking. Under pressure. Pocket starts to break down. Rolling to his right. Dumps it off underneath. And going to be drugged down there for a gain of about two yards on the play. Swung it out to the safety valve. Justin Vega for the Viper defense up to the task. It's a fourth and 13. Well, the chess master, Drew Sanders, is at it again. Well, that time, a different look on defense. He had the nose guard, number 52, uh, 50, Christian Davis, drop back like an spy set while he was bringing uh, pressure from, from another direction. So I think Vela's going to have to be prepared for uh, pressure coming from everywhere, just yep. like Coach Sanders always does. Vegas set to punt it away. Good snap back. Low kick this time. Returnable. Fielded by Coleman at the 20. Nice hole up the sideline to the 30. Cuts it back to about the 33-yard line, but the Vibers will start this drive in good field position. First down and 10 at the 33-yard line. Winner of this game meets the winner of Westlake versus Far San Juan Alamo North in the regional final game. That game is underway at the Alamo Dome. Vela, by the way, defeated Far San Juan Alamo North. Try saying that 10 times fast. <laughs> defeated them 24 to nothing back on September 10th. That's about the closest we've got to any sort of common opponent with these guys. Yeah, that's be interesting to see where things stand at the end of today. Here we go, Vipers, first and 10. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. Moving from left to right up, 7-0, looking for more. Handoff, no play action. Buchanan in trouble. Mm. He's going to go down. 
Sacked inside. They're going to give him four progress to the 23, so not a complete disaster, but a good play there by Jake Duffner. Junior <laughs> defensive lineman. That's a big loss of 11 yards, the second and 21. It's another first down throw attempt. And just got beat for quickness right there on the outside. Nice speed rush. Vela's 11-0 for a reason, I think, Merle. Yeah. They're not intimidated, that's for sure. No, not at all. Buchanan dropping back, looking, firing left side, and Coyle in and out of the hands of Miles Coleman. Took a shot right as his hands touched the football. Joshua Garcia there to separate him from it. And it's third and long. We are on display today, Merle, we're seeing Vela's got some speed across the board on defense. Uh, defensive yeah. backs are hanging with us. Speed rushers. Deadly combination. Third and 21 to receive his wide left two to the near side. Interesting play call right here. See what Coach Mauser draws up. They send Coleman in motion from right to left across the formation. Now trips wide left. Buchanan dropping back. Looking, firing over to the left side and in and out of the hands of Beecham. Good coverage again by Miguel Ibarra. And the Vipers unable to recover from the sack and the punting unit back on again. Well, it's another three and out. So difficult, Merle, when you get in that behind the chain situation. Yeah. You're second down and 20. It's a really tough hole to dig out of. That's well, a boomed one last time. Need to deliver again here. Back to receive the punt is Justin Navarro. Good snap back. High punt, kind of short. Takes a uh, to touch somebody? Hmm. I thought it might have. The Vipers think they might have, but uh, no word yet from the official. And it's going to be down there at the 44-yard line for the Sabercats. Well, it's so tough to play Vandergrift. They do so many different things in all three phases of the game. That right. time, you see the spread punt formation. You had like one-and-a-half to two-foot splits between each down lineman, and you had three guys in a wall up in front of Hudson Lilly, including number 99, Damian Wimberly, the defensive lineman, lined up in an up-back position. I don't think we've seen that punt look this year. I, I think you're right. And good to see Wimberly back on the field. He was shaken up in last week's game. Hand off up the middle and spins to the 47-yard line. A gain of about two yards on the play for Pablo Rivera. Let's give him three, second down and seven. Boy, he took a really big shot that time from that Swartwood or Sterling Emerson. Not, not going to be so uh, excited about running in the middle again <laughs> if he gets hit like that too many more times. Piper showing pressure on the far side, second and seven. Two receivers wide right, one of the near side. Hand off Rivera. Nope, this is a different running back out across the 50 and crashes inside the 45 down to the 43 yard line. First touch of the ball game for Ryan Clough, a senior halfback. He brought down by Jackson Oliver, but a first down for the Sabercats. He looks to be a, a bigger, more stout ball carrier. Not as much speed, but he ran tough. Hand off right side, Rivera inside the 40. To the 35, trips up and falls down to the 31-yard line. Another first down for Vela. Well, this is so unusual today. One of the many different variations of the spread is the spread run attack. So yeah. Vela's just lining it up quick, snapping it, trying, to run, trying to run it. Viper's going to call a timeout. We'll take it with them. Quick timeout of the field. You're listening to Van Dyke Viper's football on the Austin Radio Network. All right, first quarter. ...dealer for the world's number one water sports towboats, Malibu. Now with locations in Austin and Texas Ski Ranch in New Braunfels, we cover all of Central Texas. Come see the enthusiasts at Texas Malibu in Austin or Texas Ski Ranch in New Braunfels or give them a call, 512-244-9777 or visit them online, texasmalibu.com. That's 512-244-9777. Then get on the water with your crew and make memories that'll last uh. a lifetime. First down and 10 Sabercats after the Viper timeout from the 30-yard line. Hand off left side, Rivera, and Emerson there to drag him down after a short two-yard pickup. 
Second down and eight. Something Coach Sanders hasn't had to do a lot of this year, Hank, is call that defensive timeout. Well, that's true, Merle. But you know, one thing about Coach Sanders, he really seems to be just a master of many things, including clock management. I think that was a really good timeout. I agree. Rivera right side, and the defense responding, stacking him up after about a three-yard pickup. They're set up at third and five. A little bit of a rugby scrum going on there. Yeah, it's two things. It's breaking the momentum, and it's also making some adjustments. You can see the improvement right there. Yeah, third and five. This is inside of a minute to go. Vela probably in four-down territory. Third down and five from the 25-yard line. Dropping back. Campbell fires over the left side, complete in the flat, and drug down mm. the 26-yard line, a loss of a yard of the play. There's that Beautiful man. Beautiful play there by Max Ewell. Reception made by Jaden Tovar, but a loss of a yard in the play. Going to bring up a fourth and five with 30 seconds to go. Boy, one thing that's <laughs> readily apparent any time you watch these Vipers play is just the yards after catch are not there. That's just right. a great tackle. You know, the, the receiver's running away from Maxwell there and just did a great job of wrapping him up and holding on and bringing him down. Okay, they're going to try a long field goal. 42-yard attempt into the win. The kick is up and they missed, missed it. it. So the Viper defense gets the hold with 24 seconds left. Bend but don't break. That's a little interesting. I really thought we would see him line up and go for it there. I did too. The Vipers did in a similar, similar spot on the field and a similar down in distance, but... Vela just looking for some points to put on the board. It's a long kick for a high school yeah, kicker, especially that's a into the wind. 42 yards, and yeah. it's not, not gusting, but it's, it's a not pretty, helping either. pretty stiff breeze. You can see the wind hold that ball up. Right. So Vipers up quickly. We've got some emails in at voice of the Vipers at gmail.com, but these two teams just won't give us a chance to read them. Handoff up the middle. Shepard. Push in the pile forward. Just keep pounding. Just keep those body blows. Three-yard pickup, second and seven. And we've got whistles. Uh, what do we have here? First penalty of the game, you say? No? Yeah. Line up and let them play. Third, yeah. Three yards in a cloud of rubber pellets, as you That's like to right. say, Merle. And Looks the like clock is going to tick down to zero. So at the end of the first quarter of play, fast and furious, Vipers up seven to nothing. We'll take a break. Be back for quarter number two. You're listening to Vanity Piper's Football on the ABC Home and Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. Hi, I'm Daryl Foytick, owner of Advantage Austin Properties and a proud sponsor of our Vandergriff Vipers football team. Advantage Austin Properties is your Four Points area experts for all your real estate needs. My wife, Annie, and I have been Four Points area residents for over 15 years and provide potential homeowners a wealth of knowledge and information about the Four Points area. Please call Advantage Austin Properties at 512-418-0594 or visit livinginfourpoints.com for more information. Now these guys aren't letting the turkey get cold. Right back to the action. They come out of the uh, commercial break there. Ryan Shepard with a handoff back to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a third down and seven. No gain in the play. Well, I'll tell you what, Vail is pretty stingy up there in that front. The four-man defensive line. You got number 38. He's causing a little bit of mayhem and destruction in there. That is Nilsson Garcia. Also big number 99. He's had a tackle for loss today. That's Joshua Gallegos. Third and seven coming up. Merle Bertrand, Hank Hudson here. Zach Lacero down on the sideline. Aaron Anderson back at the Austin Radio Network Studios. Second quarter underway. Buchanan dropping back in the third and seven. Going right to left. Pass caught by Shepard out of the backfield at the 50-yard line. Took a shot, but hung on. First down, Vandegrift. Wow, man, he really got plowed there. <laughs> Excellent concentration by Shepard to hang on to that, Merle, because he got walloped. He did. He was in the air, and he got bounced back like a pinball, but hung on. Trips now to the near side, going from right to left. Handoff to Shepard, up the middle. Big hole, hurdles down to the 45-yard line, a gain of about five. Second down and five through the air, on the ground. 
One if by land, two exactly. if by sea, Merle. We can do it either way. If it gets some rain, he'd probably swim for a few. Yeah. And they'll run running behind a uh, big number 72 on the left side, Ian Reed. He's done such an amazing job all year. Is running buddy number 61 on the line. That is Juan Gutierrez. Second and five. Vibers with a bunch formation. I'll hand off Foster. Off right tackle. Nice hole. He puts a shoulder down and bangs down inside the 40-yard line. Should be enough for a Viper first down. Yeah, nice looking carry there from number 23, Alex Witt. Good job running behind that right side. I like that they're getting him in the ball game early. Indeed. Keep Shepard fresh. Back to Witt. Up the middle. Puts his head down and dives down inside the 40 to the 38. A gain of two. Bring up a second down and eight. Well, you're right, Merle. This is something we saw last week. Getting Witt, Witt some touches early. He's such an effective ball carrier with a nice little one-two punch. Second down and a long eight. Two receivers near side. They're going to give it to him again. This time off right tackle. Inside the 35 down to about the 34-yard line. I'll say the 35, so third and five coming up. Nice looking run there again. Running from the right side that time. Over there you've got number 77, Luke Collins. Number 76, Luke uh, Kevin Corcoran. Of course, Ethan Bernard, the center. This unit's done an amazing job all year up front. Buchanan under center. Viberson, three receivers and a triangle to the left side. Fade pattern over the center of the field. Landon Thomason overshot. By a yard or two, that'll make up a fourth down. Good looking play design, just let them a little bit too much. Finding some areas of space up the seam, Merle. Right. So Vela's doing some things, maybe responding to those outside throws. So the the inside seam routes look like to be open. Saw twice on this drive. Now the Viper's going for it, Merle, on fourth and five. On fourth and five from the 35. Coleman comes in motion left to right. Buchanan rolling left and whistles blow. What do we got? Timeout. Yep, timeout. Timeout Vandergrift. taken by the Vipers. So timeout. Let's take it with them real quick. You're listening to Vanity Good Vipers Football on the Austin Radio Network. If you're considering buying or selling a home, when it comes to real estate, it helps to know the area. And that's where the Bartlett Real Estate Group comes in. Not only is the Bartlett Real Estate Group one of Austin Business Journal's top real estate groups in Austin, but the Bartlett Real Estate Group has been serving the Four Points community for more than 25 years. The Bartlett Real Estate Group is also a trusted supporter of Vandegrift High School football. For more info on the Bartlett Real Estate Group, visit them online at thebartlettteam.com or call them today, 512-418-1435. They're happy to start a conversation about your move. The Bartlett Real Estate Group, 25 years of serving the Four Points area. What do you think? Quick kick or are we going to throw it down? I'm going to take a shot. I think they'll go for it. Oh. Fourth and five after the timeout. The Vipers send a couple of guys in motion in. Looks like a timeout taken by Valus, so the chess match continues, Hank Hudson. Uh, interesting there. They lined up on the right hash mural with a strong right set, the split receiver, and a wing back. Then a pre-snap shift that put the strength over way over to the left-hand side. You're moving your, your flanker out there, moving the receiver. Sabercats didn't like what they saw from the sideline, didn't, didn't like what the, the defense was lined up in maybe, so... You know, going for it on fourth down. So, you know, don't you think, Merle, that the defense, the having Vandergriff Vipers defense gives you the confidence to go for it in a situation like this? That's exactly right. And that, uh, I'm sure that's what the coaches are thinking. If they don't pick it up, you know, you've got at least 65 yards of real estate behind you. That's a tough ask. It's been a tough ask for teams all year against that Vipers D. So it really gives you that much more freedom on offense. And here we go. Here we go. Still the offensive unit. Yep, fourth and five. Now Buchanan can pooch punt it, as you talked about a minute ago. We'll see what they do. Fourth and five from the Velik 35-yard line. Coleman in motion, play action. Buchanan dropping back, looking fine over the center of the field. Cole Caught. Thomason, that's going to be into the end zone. Touchdown, Vandegrift. Wow. They tried it a moment ago to the left, overshot him. This time, a perfect throw, and the Vipers are up by two scores. Wow, what a great-looking pass. Man, you couldn't have handed it to him any no. better that time. And what I love about these Vandergriff Vipers, Merle, is that they're hands catchers out there. That ball doesn't get to the body. Went up there, thumbs together. Re look, reach, catch, tuck, score. Just like you draw it up. Aiden Arnold on for the extra point. 
out of the hold of Hudson Lilly. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. Looks good from here. And it's good. So 9.23 to go first half. Vipers now with a little bit of breathing room. Up 14 to nothing. I'm going to catch up on the email before this game gets away from us. Jen Lidsky writing in says we'd like to shout out number 54, Gage Garrison. From the Uido family, let's go Big G. Also, good luck to Miles Coleman and Alex Foster. Go get the dub. That came in from Joshua Rankin. A couple of more here. They're coming in quick. Another shout out to Gage Garrison. This time from Karen and Bruce Garrison. Go Vipers. Play hard today and bring home the win. Gage, we know you will do your best and help get the victory. Uh, a couple more here from Leanne James. Says go 5-4. We love you from the James family. 5-4. Gage Garrison. Gage got Garrison, club. man. He is got uh, groupies. I think the fix is in. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Shivers listening again from Georgia, the Atlantic trainer. Chris Shivers is my son. He loves every minute of it. He has no children, so the players are his children. Well, Doc Shivers does a great job, let me tell you. Oh, man, he's awesome. I got here about two hours, uh, two and a half hours before the game started, and they were already taping up the players, and those guys put in some long days. Yes, they do. The kickoff. Sails back to the 5 draw, then up to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. And a nice return out to the 25. Still on his feet out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Good return there from Pablo Rivera. He does a little bit of everything, number one, for the Sabercats. Returns kicks. Leading rusher, second leading receiver. Give a shout-out to our broadcast partner, Scott Schaffner, listening in from Cincinnati. He's getting ready to watch his alma mater play tonight. And a shout-out to my mom up in Illinois tuned in, where it's a lot cooler than it is here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Yeah, so we're up here uh, at 68 degrees. Schaffner says that it's, uh, tw my, it's 28 degrees <laughs> for the game he's going to tonight. Hand off right side, Rivera. This time stacked up at about the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a yard out to the 35, second down and nine. Looks like everybody's getting up to game speed right now. The thing about playing a Coach Sanders defense, man, when he gets a certain amount of looks at what you're doing, yep. not just on film, but during the game, he can really put together a defense that's going to give you trouble. One receiver to the left, two to the near side. 8.47 to go first half. Vipers up 14 to nothing. Dropping back, under pressure, rolling, fighting over the center of the field, and incomplete. May have been deflected, but it was undershot a little bit from Chase Campbell trying to get it to Rivera. He's got a good arm, but he's not the most mobile. Right. You know, and that's that's something that gives any defense fits, but he's going to be pretty stationary back there, which really allows you to, d to do some things on the defensive side. Yep. Third down and a long eight, dropping back. Campbell. Pocket breaking down, and he trips up. That ball might be out. That's a fumble. That's a fumble. The Viper's going to get it. He tripped trying to scramble for the ball came out and falling on it for the Vandegut Vipers was Max Ewell. They're going to talk it over, but I don't think the bomber's moving forward. Let's see what the referees decide. They're going to call that an incomplete pass. Oh, my goodness. He might have been moving his arm forward. We do have uh, the 55-year veteran referee working the scoreboard. Yep. He's been doing the scoreboard here for 15 years. And we got to meet him before the game, Frank Eichholz. Yep. Nice gentleman. He's probably seen a lot of football here. Putting unit on. Low line drive squib kick. Takes a high bounce, and the Vibers is going to get away from it. Let it roll dead at the 27-yard line. And that's where Vandekoff will take over. First down and 10. Moving from right to left up 14 to nothing. With 7.47 to go here in this first half. Well, it should be interesting to see what we get from the Vipers Merle this time on offense. This is the time in the game where in the past we've seen that four-minute offense. Yeah. Where they go a little slower, try and take some of the time off the clock, matriculate down the field. Let's see what we get this time from the Vipers. Spring and Coleman split out wide to the right. Beach him to the near side. Thompson comes in motion, settles in on the right side. Witt in the backfield, line up to the right side of Buchanan. And it's going to be a whip with the carry off the left side. Makes the first man miss. Makes the second man miss out to the 33-yard line. He just sidestepped the defender to pick up six yards on the play. Well, it's not uh, for us normal mortals to make that kind <laughs> of cut. But uh, Mr. Witt look, made it look easy. Got those fluid hips. Tough-looking run. Second down and four. 
Handoff would again. Oh, play action complete to Beecham, and that's going to be out to the 42-yard line. Good for a first down. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing about Buchanan that's really impressed me is his accuracy in terms of where he puts the ball. That's the, exactly where you want that kind of pass to be delivered, right about the shoulder level. Dropping back Buchanan, looking, firing, got a fade pattern. He's got Beecham up the near sideline and incomplete. Overshot him a little bit. Wind may have pushed that ball out of bounds. Good coverage there by Matthew Luna. That'll bring up a second down and 10. So that ball and also the ball to, um, was it number 18 for the touchdown? That's Landon Thomason. Right. That ball, he's running one direction, looking back over his shoulder. You want that ball just around the shoulder high. You can put your thumbs together and catch it in stride. That way you don't have to break that stride run and runs right straight into the end zone. Where if that ball's not delivered in that area, you have to make it, you have to slow down. Just a great accuracy by Buchanan. Rajon Middleton settles into the right slot now. Second down and 10. Play action. They get it to Middleton at the 45-yard line. Good speed out to the 50. Very near the first down mark. Going to be about a yard shy. Nine-yard pickup. Third and one. So many weapons. Yeah. Boy, moving around that time. He brought him in motion. So linebacker, in the, based on the defense, they're running that 4-3 with two safeties. Linebacker's got to be on that. Third and one. Handoff. Left side. Witt. He's going to have the first down. Axel Shepard down to 45. And still, he was laid out and still tippy-toeing forward to pick up all the way down to the 42-yard line. Such a resourceful runner. Shepard is, Merle, he just manages to find these spaces that you don't think are there. Right. Turned a three-yard gain into a six- or seven-yard gain on that play. Yeah, it looks like we have an injured Viper. It might be Landon Thomason. So an injury timeout. Let's go ahead and take it with them. Timeout of the field. You're listening to Vandegar Fibers Football on the Austin Radio Network. Treat your car to big shine and little time at the Big Red Express Car Wash. Choose from one of our four exterior car washes or go unlimited and wash as often as you want with one of our monthly wash plans. In our complimentary lot, you'll find free vacuums, towels, glass cleaner, a matte wash station, and more. Protect your investment with our superior cleaning and protectant products such as Rain-X and Simonize Hot Wax. We're always ready to provide you with friendly service where your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed. Stop by the Big Red Express Car Wash today. We'll be waiting Landon for Thomas. you. Fortunately, gets up, trots off the field under his own power. So the Vipers right back to work here. First down and 10 at the Vela's 42-yard line, moving from right to left. Witt comes in motion to the right side. Empty back set for Braden Buchanan. Buchanan dropping back. Looking fires over the right side. Complete to Grayland Spring at the 38. Dives inside the 35-yard line. Another seven-yard pickup. Second down and three. Oh, a nice-looking play design there. You start off in a two-by-two, two, which is two receivers to each side. A balanced look. Then you motion your back to the right side and the wide side just creates an acre of space over there as they were changing their coverage. Coverage. Buchanan dropping back. Fade pattern over to the left side and Middleton comes back. Did he stay in bounds? Oh, oh just out of bounds. Tremendous effort at about the 12-yard line. Caught it. He knew where he was. He just couldn't quite to uh, toe tap it down. Changing the angle of uh, the throw there that time, Merle. So going over the top of the fade has been unsuccessful. That time he threw it on a line to the back shoulder. Right. Great adjustment and catch by Middleton. Just a little bit of, ran out of real estate. You take a shot there because it's third and three. You probably got two downs yeah. to pick up these three yards. I think you're right. We may see another ball. 6-14 to go first half. Vipers up 14, nothing looking for more. Third and three from the Vela 35 yard line. Play action, Buchanan. Now he's gonna tuck it under and run for it. He's gonna pick up the first down of more inside the 30, pushing his way down to the 25 yard line. Mm. Smart, smart play by the junior quarterback. I'll tell you what, man, he looks like a fullback. He did. Put Probably the, felt like a fullback. Yeah, well, he, put, he, put, he wrapped up the ball with both arms that time and just said, I'm going to go get, some, get me some yardage. I want to get home to eat some uh, Thanksgiving leftovers. <laughs> Buchanan, play action. Oh, dropped in the backfield. Beautiful job that time by Matthew Luna. He's played a nice game for Edinburgh Vela. Got a hold of Buchanan on the quarterback keeper and lost of about four yards, second and 14. You know, but based on what we've seen this year, you come into this game expecting our, our guys on the outside to be able to outrun the defensive backs, the cornerbacks over there, but they've been in, doing a great job locking yeah. up in coverage. Those deep balls have not been there. Five and a half to go, second and 14. Two receivers wide right, one on the near side. Witt lined up to the right side of Buchanan. Play action. 
Buchanan fires over the center. Wide open. Reese Beecham. Touchdown, Vandegrift. Wow. How can you be so wide open? I don't know. When you're number one. That's the best player on the receiver on the field. I mean, just wide open. Again, I think it's part of the attack. Coach Mauser attacking outside Merle, outside the hash marks. Then we've seen these throws for the last two touchdowns have been directly up the right middle in the between middle. the hashes. Yep. And the guys are wide open in both instances. And, of course, you got Buchanan delivering it like he's handing it to him. This <laughs> touchdown and just awesome. Good snap and hold. And Hayden Arnold is now 73 out of 73 on point after attempts. And the Vipers lead it. 21 to nothing. We'll take a break and turn it back over to the defense. You're listening to Bandica Fibers Football on the Austin Radio Network. Family time, anytime. Always worth every dime. On our way, chicken eat. Unbelievable sweet tea. Extra cinders, they're the best. Not to mention all the rest. Chicken tea is the place to go for all of us in the know. Plenty of sides to make a meal. Chicken E is for real. Follow me to Chicken E. Gotta have their CT. Kickoff from the 40-yard line. Going to sail back inside the 5, back to the 2, up to the 5. Coming from left to left to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. And knocked down right there at the 20-yard line. On the return for the Sabercast, Justin Navarro. But the Vipers with 5-10 to go in the first half, leading a 21 to nothing. When you talk about how well coached these two football teams are, Merle, so here we are with 5 minutes left in the first half. There's been no penalties, no turnovers. Right. Just solid uh, ball security and... Uh, you know, the attack so far has been going to the Vipers' way, but three touchdown passes from Buchanan. Running game not working as well, so they're leaving some spots open in that zone, and Buchanan's been exploiting them. First and 10 Sabercats, Wildcat to Rivera, and he's going to be swallowed up and stopped for no gain of the play. In on the stop for the Vipers, Max Ewell. Second down and 10 as KP Swartwood checks in, says, Go Vipers, push him back. Special shout out to number 10 Slater Swartwood from Mimi and Yes Yes in New Orleans. And as always, they spell it G-E-A-U-X, yes, Vipers. I love that. And uh, defensive play of the game so far might be yep. Fort Wood's big tackle for loss and intentional grounding. Drew an intentional grounding penalty. Picked up one, second and nine. Campbell dropping back. Pump fake, and he's going to go down. Sacked inside at 15, back to the 14-yard line. Coming in that time, Damian Wimberley with the sack. Well, I'll tell you what, Merle. Three-man rush is that time. Swartwood lined up with his hand on the ground and then dropped back into coverage. So you rushed three there, eight in coverage. Be a hard, hard place to find a pocket to throw in. And our three did better than their five. Yeah. So third down and 14 at a timeout taken by the Vipers with 4-11 to go. 21 to nothing. We mentioned the winner of this one meets the winner of uh, Westlake and Far San Juan Alamo North next week. And the latest we've got here is 28 to nothing Westlake. That's early second quarter already. So no big surprise. The defending state champion Westlake Chaparral is taking care of business. And as you said, Hank, if that holds and this one holds, be a little football play Oof. next weekend. That's a big game. It's a big game for the Austin community. Big game for this Vipers program, Westlake. I mean, everybody knows who they are. Yeah. So it's going to be got some got some football to play here first. Oh yeah. Lake Travis defeated Laredo United South earlier today, 35 to 19. Cedar Park season is done. Kind of a rebuilding year for the Timberwolves, which is weird to say. They fell to Katie Patel, 65 to 14, out uh, in Wallace. Laga Vista, two touchdowns scored in the final minute and a half of that one. Laga Vista getting the win over Edna, 33 to 29. Some of the other scores around Central Texas on this third weekend of the postseason. Third down and 14, dropping back Campbell. Under pressure again. Hit and fumble. The There's ball's fumble. out. Looks like Bailey got back out at the 16-yard line. 
That'll be about a two-yard pickup of the big offensive lineman, number 74, falling on the football. This James Cantu. Uh, there's that man again, number 42, Oliver Yendo. Last week he recovered three fumbles, Murray. Right. This week he causes a fumble as the coverage broke down. They rushed four that time. Big play by Yendo again. Not sure why the clock has stopped unless they call that an incomplete pass. Hmm. They're going to say okay. it's a fumble it's recovery. It's a fumble recovered by the Vipers. Wow. Right, we're going to have a little conversation here about I'm this not, one. What is the deal on that? They came up with the football. I get that it was a fumble. I agree with that. But it's got to be a fumble recovered by Vela. Looks like they're going to correct themselves here. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, Santa's probably walking the other direction. Yeah, so the <laughs> referee had to go around the, <laughs> the defensive unit to find Coach Sanders. And some explanation is going on here. What in the world? Hmm. The only thing that makes sense is the fumble recovered by Vela. Yeah. And they should I, wind the clock. Yeah, that's surely what's happening. Nice jumbotron here at yeah. Cabinet Stadium. I'd show it to you, but that's the window of the press box right there. <laughs> so... But at least we're not shooting through glass. So That's exactly we'll right. Take it. First time this year. Yeah. 355 left in the half. you got to figure you're going to get really good field position here. Good snap. Good punt. Low line drive end over end kick. Oh, dropped. Got to get back on that football. Scramble for it. Looks like the Vipers got back on it. Miles Coleman may have taken his eyes off of it, but he scrambled back and recovered at the 38-yard line. The Viper fans' hearts are beating again. Oh, well, a disaster avoided. Miles Coleman bobbled it and then dropped on it quickly. Well, so far, Merle, we talked about in the beginning, it's no hocus pocus, but just focus right. is what we've needed from this Vanderbilt team. They're taking care of the football, no penalties. It's a great way to start this football game up 21-0. you got 347 left in the first half. Great field position. My mom was a big fan of that saying, by the way. No, no hocus. hocus pocus, just focus. <laughs> yeah. First and 10 to the 38-yard line for the Vipers. Up by three scores. they got time to get another one. 3.47 to go. Hand off to Witt. And he is going to be stacked up in the backfield for no gain. Second down and 10. What well, a really good quickness up front from the Vela Sabercats. They just seem to be able to find a way to squeeze, squeeze through some of those gaps. Not, not the biggest team we've seen so far right. this year, but definitely impressed with their team speed on defense. Second down and 10. Two receivers near side. Reverse to Coleman. Start to left, go to the right. Cross the 40 and out to about the 43 yard line. Nice job there staying home for Vela by Miguel Ibarra to keep that to about a five yard pickup, third down and five. Little razzle dazzle. I am starting to wonder a little bit where number zero is. Haven't seen Ryan Shepard since, uh, I mean, he's been out in the field, but he's on the sideline standing up. It looks fine. May just keep it fresh for the second half. Dropping back Buchanan, looking, rolling to his left. Pump fake, fires over the left side. He's got Rajon Middleton, and it's gonna be intercepted at the six yard line. Picked off by Matthew Luna. Well, that's just as good as a punt for it my was. money. But Those so two are just battling all the way down the field. Yeah, great coverage again. And that was a long, long throw. Buchanan moving to his left, Merle. It's very difficult to reorient yourself there because you've got to get your hips all yeah. the way around and get your shoulder upfield. And then he had to throw it a country mile. A good defense by Vela. Their fans, that's the loudest uh, eruption we've heard from yeah. them today. So. So impressed with their fans and the turnout. They have really filled up that side of the stadium. Yeah, that side of the stadium. You can see part of it there. It is full over there. Yeah, uh, Vipers a pretty good turnout, so I'll tell well. you what. I think we, we, we're equal to the task. Considering it's almost a four-hour drive from Vandegrift, the four points area. First down at the six-yard line. Campbell dropping back. Good foot on the goal line, and he might be dropped. Safety. Let's see what they say. No, he got out of the end oh, zone. Just got man. it out to the one. Darn, I wanted two points. They had him in the end zone, but he managed to get make a second push and get it out to the one yard line. A loss at five. Is that Yule and Yeah. Anybody else in there? <laughs> <laughs> second down at about 16 from the one yard line. 
Two and a half to go. Vipers up by 21. Campbell with Rivera to his left side. Give it to Rivera. Off right tackle and gets it back out near the original line of scrimmage. Bring up a third down and about 11. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Vipers take another time out here. Uh, I, I agree. Great job that time. Number four, Griffin Schaefer. We don't call his name a lot, Merle, and that's no. a good thing if you're a defensive back. He just always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Two minutes to go, third down and call it 10 from the eight yard line. Campbell in no hurry here. Wildcat to Rivera off the left side and Viper slow him up. Can they get him down in time? They're gonna stack him up at about the 14 yard line. Uh, Picked up four or five yards but then the Cavalry arrived. Uh, they're gonna keep the clock running there so let's we'll see if Coach Sanders Likes to take a, take a timeout. Clock still running. Yep, 128 to go. I don't see a timeout indicator on the scoreboard. I don't either. I think we've got one left. I think you're right. Clock continuing to wind, so there's no way they're going to go for it here. No. Fourth and about three. Baylor will get the football to start the second half. They're going to let it run down. Looks like Vela may take a timeout because they're walking off the field. So they may take a timeout as the play clock expires. Well, timeout of the field. Lindsey Watson writing in. So shout out to Grayson Peck and Griffin Schaefer. Just mentioned him yeah. a moment ago. Listening from San Antonio, UIW, Southland Conference champions, hosting the first round of the FCS playoff game on Saturday. Bring home the W Vipers. Is that Colton Peck? The shout out to th Colton Peck, number 38? Uh, Grayson Peck. Grayson Peck. Yeah, oh. and uh, Griffin Schaefer. Uh, well, Colton Peck, he uh, he ran the American flag out, which is yeah. always a beautiful sight to see the Vipers coming through. The luck. Viper Nation is uh, vocal tonight on the email. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And there's a bunch of them here, too. Good luck to Reese Watson and UIW tomorrow. Incarnate word. I bet there's a lot of alumni here on this holiday weekend. I bet so. We get our agent, Zach Lucero, on the job, the Master of Intelligence Gathering. He'll likely update us with the alumni count. See some of the Viper fans down below. It's, this is, they're right below us here. This is a great vantage point to watch a football game. Punting it back on here for the Sabercats. Ooh, Vipers went for the block. Didn't quite get it. Pretty good punt. Beecham over the shoulder catch back at the 40-yard line. Now he returns up the far sideline and steps out of bounds at the 45. The Vipers with 44 seconds and I think one time out to work with. First uh, down and 10. I'll tell you what, there, a lot of coaches would discourage that type of uh, punt reception. Yeah. <laughs> Running that way backwards <laughs> then turning to catch it over your shoulder. That's not That's not a catch for mere mortals. Right, if you don't make it, they're going to get the football at yeah. about the 25-yard line to give them life. But yeah, just a great, great job by Beecham there. So we'll see what the Vipers do here for this final 44 seconds. Two receivers to the near side. Witt in the backfield. One receiver wide right trips to the near side. Buchanan dropping back. Looking. Pump fake. Pointing downfield. Fires over to the right side. Got a receiver behind the defense. Graylin spring to the 30. Spins inside the 25 down to the 21 yard line. Wow, what a huge play. <laughs> and oh man. What a huge play. And I'll tell you what, did you see the communication there that right. time, Earl? Because Buchanan waved him downfield, wanted him to go deep. Then Spring had to break up field and uh, break out of a holding. The, yeah. uh, the, the, the Baylor defender had grabbed his jersey. So just a great job communicating on the field right at th that time. Vipers knocking on the door again at the 25-yard line. Buchanan dropping back. Pump fake fires over the left side. This time a sliding attempt made at the 15, but it falls incomplete. Good effort there by Rajon Middleton. Trying to come back and help out his quarterback. Second and 10. Stops the clock with 28 seconds to go. Well, you figure you can run at least three plays with 28 seconds left. Take yeah. seven to eight seconds, especially if you're throwing the ball. So plenty of time here for the Vipers. Beecham comes in motion, Buchanan rolling to his left. Now stops, gives ground back to his right, buys himself some time, Pat fires over towards the end zone, jump ball, caught, caught. touchdown Vandegrift! Where did he come from? That was amazing. I, I don't know. It's Middleton. No, it's, it's Miles Coleman. It's Coleman, yeah. 
It looked like they were trying to go to Graham Spring in the corner, and Coleman flashed in front of him and made the catch. Oh, wow. Unbelievable throw and catch. The back corner, Merle. And Coleman just kind of came out of nowhere, kept yeah. running. Yeah. He was trying to go Good to Spring. Grief. <laughs> what a great catch. I'll tell you what, again, Merle, we see a receiver from Vandegrift go up and high point yep. the football. Thumbs together. Look, reached, catch, tuck, and score. Hayden Arnold for the extra point. It is up, and it is good. 28 to nothing, the Vipers. It took them all of 26 seconds to take it down and score, and Vandegrift is in command here, 28 to nothing. Wow. That's a big-time play right there by Miles Coleman. I mean, Buchanan did a great job spinning to his right to buy some time. He was going to try to force that ball to Grayland Spring and let the big guy make a catch. Spring was double covered. Yeah, I think we, at <laughs> some point we need to ask, uh, Braden, hey, who were you throwing that to? Yeah. Who were you throwing to? But I'll tell you what, Miles Coleman just did a great job. Yeah. He was running uh, across the back of the end zone reel and just kind of zeroed in on the ball like a center fielder and really went up and made a, a beautiful catch. Well, you, you talk all the time about defenders jumping the route. I think uh, I think he jumped the route that time. <laughs> That's right. Nice to be able to say that from, uh, on the offensive side. Yep. Hey, it worked. Super athletic play. Wow. It's probably uh, the work, all that work that he does with his sister. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We heard from her this year. <laughs> She's out in school at Arizona, I think, or Arizona State, right? The you know, Coleman they're, family. They're both athletes, athletes, so he probably cut in front of her at the, you know, <laughs> at the kitchen once that's or twice. That's right. That's right. Hayden Arnold set to kick it off from the 40-yard line. And a short kick. Fielded at the 10 to the 15. And nice turn to the 20. Got to get him down. Nice job there. Good coverage. I think that was Foster at the 24. I'm not sure. I saw a 20-something. Cole McGuane, 33 in there. Also, is that 20? It was actually 24 Connor Freeman. Connor I think, Freeman. I wanted to get to him. Cole McGuane was there. So awesome. 10 ticks on the clock. We'll see what uh, Vela does here. Also 25, that's Draken making his presence known on special team. 10 seconds left. Well, I'll like tell you Vela. what, three, three man and four man rush has been very effective for the Vipers, which really puts a lot of pressure on yes, it does. the Sabercats. They're just going to take a, take a knee here. That's exactly what they do, and we're going to reach the end of the first half. What a half by the Bandiga Vipers, picking up right where they left off last week against Cibolo Steel. We are halfway to a matchup with Westlake, but a lot of football left to be played against the proud Edinburgh Vela squad. And uh, quick thoughts here, Hank, as we get ready for the halftime festivities. Well, just a very fast-paced game. Both teams, Merle, had seven possessions in that first half, which is very uncommon to get that many possessions. But you know what? Uh, seven possessions for the Sabercats, six punts and one missed field goal. No, excuse me, five punts, one missed field goal, and then the end of the half there. So the Vipers on seven possessions have scored four touchdowns. So... Well done, Vipers. Well done, Vipers. Halfway home. 28 to nothing to score here at the end of the first half. We'll take a break, and uh, we'll hear from uh, Zach Lucero. He'll have a chance to catch up with Coach Sanders, get his thoughts in the first half, get you caught up in some of the other scores. Hank will have some of the stats for you. We are at halftime here in Corpus Christi. Your score, Vandegrift 28, Edinburgh Vale and nothing in this regional semifinal matchup. Vandegrift Vipers playoff football on the ABC Home and Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. Become a Vibe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe news throughout the entire year subscribe today what are you waiting for it's less than a cup of coffee a month become a vibe insider $2.99 a month $23.99 for the whole year hey it's vibe we will see you at the games the light shines on local students making their mark we grind as brothers and we won as brothers today we just have each other's back no matter what see what it takes to be the best in class High School Spotlight, Sunday on Valley Sports Southwest.
Chris Province CPA, your local tax expert and a great supporter of Viper Football. With over 26 years of delivering excellent services in the areas of tax and accounting services, estate tax and retirement planning, business succession planning, and consulting, Chris, the Viper Nation's go-to expert for all things taxes. Chris and Pam Province wish the Vandergriff 2020 football program success and a great season. Remember, it takes what it takes, Vipers. Cobra Cadillac prides itself on offering first-class services that match our first-class products. Hi, I'm Courtney Covert, and as part of Covert Cadillac's Advantage program, when you purchase from us, you're entitled to benefits that few other dealers can offer. An at-home delivery option, priority loaner vehicle, concierge service, courtesy car washes, and much, much more. Come by and visit us today to experience the Covert commitment for yourself. Covert Cadillac, American luxury has evolved. Visit CovertCadillac.com and like us on Facebook. You know the expression, put your money where your mouth is? It's like when you're really sure of something, you put your money where your mouth is? Well, anyway, at Doghouse, we're so sure we have the best hot dogs, sausages, and burgers in Texas. We're putting our money where your mouth is. Stop in a Doghouse Four Points for your free house dog, sausage, or burger after texting VIPERS to 833-440-1100. VIPERS to 833-440-1100. Doghouse, absolute worst. If you or your Vandegrift athlete have suffered an orthopedic injury or have joint pain, let Dr. Matthew Crawford and his team at Austin Orthopedics and Sports Medicine take care of you. Dr. Crawford specializes in diagnosis and treatment of sports-related injuries with an emphasis on injury prevention and conservative treatments. He and his team offer cutting-edge arthroscopic and minimally invasive surgical techniques. Visit them today at austin-orthopedics.com. Let Austin Orthopedics and Sports Medicine keep you at the top of your game. For Aaron Turnley of Coldwell Banker Realty, home is where the heart is. A licensed realtor since 1999, Aaron Turnley has been providing turnkey real estate services since 2003. Aaron consistently ranks in the top 10% of all 94,000 Coldwell Banker agents worldwide, and she knows the community. She's been part of a Pop Warner or Viper family since landing here in Austin in 2013. For more information, visit AaronTurnley.com. Aaron Turnley of Coldwell Banker Realty, guiding you home since 2003. What a half of football by the Vandegrift Vipers. Up 28 to nothing here over the Edinburgh Vale Sabercats. Merle Bursch and Hank Hudson. Zach Lacero down on the sidelines. He's joining us now in the booth. And uh, tell you what, Zach, Vipers pretty much picked off, picked, picked up right where they left off last week against Cibolo Steel, it looks like. Yeah, this offense has, hasn't missed a beat. And, and Scott Schaffner was able to catch up with, with, with uh, Coach Sanders during the week and send us some text messages this right. morning about their conversation. And, and they, they were expecting and hoping to be able to, to – throw the ball down the field a little bit and, and the offense was getting stopped a little bit to start the game but they've kind of found that footing and been able to move the ball I think the way they wanted to Brady Buchanan um, I, I think you have to give him a game like that just to keep him hot there were some publications that were saying he was one of the players of the week in high school football so right um, after his performance last week being able to carry that over to this week uh, seeing a bunch of uh, Reggie Middleton Rajon Middleton um, Jack Nelson is, is, is out today and so we're going to see a bunch of uh, a bunch of him which is really nice um, and it's 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 always just fun to see just the different wrinkles that uh, Coach Mauser will throw at you on on, on offense, and, and the wrinkles that Coach Sanders and the defensive staff will throw at you on, on the other side of the ball. But I mean, all in all, I mean, it's twenty eight to nothing, so there's a, there's yeah. a lot of good going on for the Vipers. Uh, is everything okay with Ryan Shepard? We saw him plenty of times early, but he's been on the sidelines for most of the second quarter. Is, is everything okay? Or they're just kind of keeping him fresh for the second half. Yeah, you know, I, I saw him limp off the field, and he was sitting on the he was sitting on the training on the training table for a little while. Uh, he, he does have his helmet back on, and, yeah. and he's on the sidelines. So, um, they, I mean, if there was ever a game to kind of rest a guy like Ryan Shepard, um, and you're up 28 to nothing at halftime, this right. would be the game to do so. Well, it's interesting from a strategic standpoint about the attack from Coach Mauser in that first half. We saw 
four or five throws, Zach, outside the numbers. So throwing to the very wide spaces of the field. Didn't complete any of those, but I think that set the stage for what we saw with the attack throws up the middle, running up the seam. Was wide open those last two touchdown passes, uh, the one to Thomas and then, uh, and then the other one to Grayland Spring, uh, right up the middle. And so did you get a sense for that on the, the sideline in terms of the attack? I think it's just... It's just the confidence that they have in that they have in, in, in Buchanan. I mean, there's not a lot of high school quarterbacks that, that you can get throwing from opposite hash to opposite numbers. I mean, there's just a lot of arm strength for a throw like that. But when you have a Division One baseball player, that's that's the guy that can get it done. And yeah. And uh, after after that Landon Thomas had touchdown, I think it was he came to the sideline and, and Coach Mauser was was yelling at him saying, "Hey, great call." So I'm wondering if that if that's something that that he saw and was able to check into that and tell the coaches like, "Hey, let's look out for this." And that's something you love to see. I mean, Scott Scott would love to hear that, just the progression that we've seen um, from this guy playing the quarterback position. All right. You're on the sideline. That last touchdown, was he trying to get it to number three or was he trying to get it to number 11? You know, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I, I thought it, I, I didn't think he was throwing it to, to Miles. I, I didn't think it was going I don't think there, anybody but, thought yeah. that. But when he kept, when he, they came off the sideline, Coach Sanders was like, I don't know if this was jokingly, but congratulating Grayland Spring, like maybe he did his job of clearing the guy out right. yeah. for that underneath route. So maybe, I mean, I mean, I guess only Coach Mauser and, uh, <laughs> and Braden would know that. Well, they worked. I mean, when things are going your way, they're going your way. Yeah, yep. I think I said this last week, but who would have thought that the guy leading the team in contested catches is, is uh, and spectacular catches would be uh, number two, Miles Coleman, one of the shorter guys on the team. Right, yeah, but he did, did a great job. We, we, we likened it up here to jump on the route on your own, uh, own, own receiver. Yeah, he intercepted, he intercepted Grayland's <laughs> touchdown. Well, just statistically, just a pretty dominant performance. Vander gives over 300 yards in total offense so far. And here's the thing, when you talk about going, you know, don't want to look too far ahead, no further than the second half, who are you going to defend? Who are you going to take away? Uh, Buchanan's thrown the ball to six different guys in that first half. Four touchdown passes, two of them to Beecham, but you know he's he's spreading the ball around. And where are you going to defend? That's the question that has to be asked. I mean, you you saw the early throws on first down, first play of the game, Zach. They went deep because they wanted to kind of set the tone on here's where we're going to attack you. And uh, they've been been doing a great job. Buchanan's 10 of 16 in that first half for 226 yards and four touchdown passes to uh, passes two to Beecham. He's got four receptions for 71 yards. Uh, also getting a touchdown pass, as the aforementioned Miles Coleman on a beautiful catch. And then uh, Landon Thomason on a 45-yard touchdown right up the middle. Uh, wide open, perfectly delivered pass. Uh, 74 yards on the ground, but, you know, great job. Buchanan's had, again, a lot of time to set his feet and throw the football. He did make a pretty spectacular scrimmage, Zach, uh, uh, sc- uh, scramble when he rolled right to that that throw we're talking about in the end zone. I don't know if you saw that. He broke the defensive end's ankles and spun out to the I mean, right. Even, even that, that the one that set up that throw, that, that long pass to, to Grayland Spring, yeah. he kind of scrambled out of the pocket and started directing traffic a little bit, um, pointing and saying, hey, like I – saying, hey, go deep, which is right. like yeah. uh, I mean, every quarterback would love loves to say that. But, I mean, it's just we, – we it's not something we saw him doing at the beginning right. of the season. It's, it's, not, it's not something – I mean, obviously, we didn't see him do that last year. He's playing a different position. But it's just the, the, the maturation of this kid, and it's kind of taking over. It's like, hey, this is my team. This is my this is my offense. And, and you can feel that, and you can see that on the sideline. Well, that play was really cool because we could see Buchanan wave him downfield. Yeah. They obviously made eye contact. And then Spring tried to break up field. The Vela defender grabbed his jersey, didn't let him go upfield. He fought through that. And then a, just a drop in the bucket, beautiful pass from Buchanan. So uh, great on the field communication from those two you know it is, it is a little bit breezy out there too and another thing i've noticed on special teams on the kickoff teams um being able to shore up those tackles i mean this is this we're we broadcast vandergriff games it's not a lot of times that we we see kicks not go through the back right, of the end right. zone. Even not a lot of times we we see kicks returned and and they, they keep talking on the sideline about how, about just how quick they are but we really haven't seen any big long returns and right a lot of those guys are a lot of guys that get in only on special teams or some of the starters that have special teams roles are, are really not letting Vela get get going from from the kickoff. Well, you know, go, going back to Breen Buchanan for a second, how many times have we seen guys come in, inheriting the quarterbacks? You know, come in with the raw talent at the start of the year. By this time of the year, it's their team and they're taking over. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's we've been so lucky to to, to kind of see this the progression and the different kind of timeline of quarterbacks that have come through this program. All all so good, and and, and Braden is just it's really like taking his position as as one of those. So I mean, it's. It's been fun, and you, like I said, you've, you've definitely been able to see from game one to, to this one just the differences in his play, the differences um, in his kind of leadership, uh, the parts that he shows on the sideline. It's been it's been super fun. 
Vandergriff up 28 to nothing here at the first half. Let's go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, hopefully hear uh, uh, from Coach Sanders. Zach had a chance to talk to him, I think, on the sidelines a few moments ago. So we'll take a break, be back for more of the halftime festivities. 28 to nothing, Vipers on top, Vandergriff Vipers football on the ABC Home of Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. When you buy or sell a piece of property, it helps to have a friend in the business. Independence Title will pick up the ball on your transaction and take it right across the goal line. Independence is locally owned right here in Austin with deep roots in the Vandergrift community. Independence is also the Austin Business Journal's number one title company. Work with the home team at Independence Title. Call 329-5299 or go to independencetitle.com. If you're considering buying or selling a home, when it comes to real estate, it helps to know the area. And that's where the Bartlett Real Estate Group comes in. Not only is the Bartlett Real Estate Group one of Austin Business Journal's top real estate groups in Austin, but the Bartlett Real Estate Group has been serving the Four Points community for more than 25 years. The Bartlett Real Estate Group is also a trusted supporter of Vandegrift High School. Sunday on Valley Sports Southwest. 25 years of serving the Four Points area. Y'all listen up. Let me tell you something about group meals from Rudy's Barbecue. It's got all you need. Hey, are you wearing shorts, you mister? Need. There's everything down to the table. You even floor. own a pair of like jeans? The one that you see at the store. Oh, okay, I hear. And a bridal shower, it's better than flowers. And a long business meeting, it'll pass the hours. It'll feed all the cousins at a family function. It's better than potluck at a church luncheon. Next time you need to feed 10 or more, call and order a Rudy's Group Meal. Next in line. It's important to preserve as many of life's memories as we can. Patty Jones Photography specializes in senior and family portraits, boutique weddings, and milestone events like graduations, proms, and more. Patty offers mini sessions that include five downloads, deluxe sessions that offer 10 downloads, plus specialized packages. Remember to mention Viper Football and receive 20% off a variety of prints. Visit pattyjonesphotography.com, 737-900-5662. Capture those special moments of timeless history for your family. Family. Covert Cadillac prides itself on offering first-class services that match our first-class products. Hi, I'm Courtney Covert, and as part of Covert Cadillac's Advantage program, when you purchase from us, you're entitled to benefits that few other dealers can offer. An at-home delivery option, priority loaner vehicle, concierge service, courtesy car washes, and much, much more. Come by and visit us today to experience the Covert commitment for yourself. Covert Cadillac, American luxury has evolved. Visit CovertCadillac.com and like us on Facebook. It's never too soon to start teaching good savings and spending habits. Encourage early savings with the High Interest Youth Savings Account from South Star Bank. And teach responsible spending in a safe environment with South Star Bank's Youth Checking Account. South Star Bank Youth Accounts offer no minimum balance fee and no monthly service charge. Set your child on the path to financial stability. Open a South Star Bank Youth Account today. Learn more about SouthStarBank.com forward slash youth. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Cabanas Athletic Complex in Corpus Christi, Texas. Merle Bertrand, Hank Cutson, Zach Lucero here in the booth. And uh, Aaron Anderson back at the Austin Radio Network studio. Just a few moments ago, Zach had a chance to catch up to head coach Drew Sanders. Let's get Coach's take on the first half of action. All right, Coach, going into half up 28 to nothing. What are your thoughts? Well, um, obviously a good start, kind of what we wanted to do. Defensively, we were able to stop the bleeding that one drive. Um, we think we kind of figured out now what they're trying to do to us, so we feel like we've got a good handle on that uh, defensively. We'll go in and fix a couple of angles and, and review some of our calls. Offensively, it's nice to see. We thought we could get some down-the-field stuff, um, and it's nice to see we've kind of calmed down, settled down, and starting to get some of the stuff we thought we would get. Uh, but we'll go back in and, and uh, fix some of the stuff. They've stopped our run some, and so we got to figure out what's going on with that. And, uh, and then we'll come out, and they, they possess the ball right away. They're going to get the ball, so we got to be ready. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Better give Piper say coach Drew Sanders. He'll always fix something. They could be winning fifty six to nothing over you know the Chicago Bears and they'd fix something. Unbelievable and very succinct summary from Coach Sanders about what's going on out there. I mean that's you know, he obviously has got a really good feel for what's happening in this game and what he needs to do going forward in the second half. So it's you know, more of the same from Coach Sanders. He's involved in all parts of the game. Yeah, and you can kind of see that that at, at the beginning, it, there was a, a couple things that they weren't expecting right. um, defensively. It's, they called that early timeout on defense, just to kind of say like, "Hey, let's let's figure things out." Even saw that on offense, a, a pretty early timeout for them to kind of right the ship. And, and ever since those timeouts, they really hasn't been 
hasn't been a hiccup on either side of the ball. And we, we mentioned that because he hasn't. He that's something Coach Anderson has done quite a bit. Is called defensive timeouts if he gets feels like a team's getting on a roll early as well. Early and he hasn't had to do that much this year, but he did it here, and I think the team responded nicely to it. Yeah, I, I think so. And, and this this team is just so well coached. I mean. This is, this is that's kind of how you win here at yeah. Brandon Griff is, is the coaching and the staff that Coach Sanders assembles and being able to put the guys in the right positions and and having the guys that are able to make the plays. I mean, we've seen uh, we've seen the Brady Buchanan type development from a lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Tucker Harrison really exploding uh, in, late in the season, starting at the Round Rock game into the playoffs. Uh, Max Yule coming in really becoming one of the better linebackers in in the kind of the, the Brandon Griff lineage that we've had at, right. for linebackers and. Griffin Schaefer, another one of those guys that, that kind of took that Logan Arnold path to safety where you right. start at corner a little bit and then eventually kind of migrate to the safety position where, where he really hasn't been a, missed a beat. I mean, he's so um, he's so well studied in this defense and being able to kind of put guys in the right position, just guys like that, Oliver Yendo. Um, another big play from him in the first half causing yeah. a fumble after some deliberation among the referees. They decided that it <laughs> was a fumble after all. There's been there's been some weird the yeah. quarterback's been doing some weird stuff. Yeah. Where he it's almost like he kind of forgot about the intentional grounding rule because uh -huh. yeah. he's, he's just not wanting to take to take a sack. Right. Yeah. That first one was the, mo the most egregious example. He was getting spun around. He just kind of spiked yeah. it into the ground. So. Well, I'll tell you what the the three and four man rush for the Vipers has done uh, enough damage and chaos in that first half that it's just it's such a, a benefit to the defensive and what they're trying to do in coverage schemes when you only got to rush three or four guys to get maximum pressure. When we almost had the safety down here, uh, that was a three-man rush, and you had uh, big Damian Wimberly crashing in there to nearly get the safety. And then to you know just to piggyback again on that timeout, it was so perfect to take that timeout at that time. Uh, Vela marching down the field, five, six yards of carry, had some serious momentum, and the way that they operate with all that pace, that was a perfect timeout for Coach Sanders to just kind of reorient. And right there, the Vipers stiffened up Merle yeah. and took control of that series. Uh, they had to go into a, a field goal. On you know, I thought we we both thought they were going to go for I it. I did, yeah. And kicking into the win, they miss a field goal on their deepest penetration on uh, to, to the Vipers' side of the field. Yeah, and you mentioned and you mentioned just uh, big number ninety nine. It's been it's been. It's been nice to see Vandergriff physically dominate a team. Yes. You know, it's not it's not often where 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 Vandergriff is the bigger team of the two. Uh, so it's it's nice to see like they, when they're given the opportunity, they can do that. They can only rush three and get home, and and they can kind of, they can run the ball. They can they can throw the ball and, and protect the quarterback long enough to do so. So given given the opportunity to beat a physically dominant team, Vandergriff is is doing so. Well, we're going to sneak in another break here before uh, we get back to the second half. So we don't have to be here until 10 o'clock at night. Before we go, I want to give a shout-out to uh, Stephen and Barbara Springer. says, unable to be there in the stadium in person. We're supporting the Vipers via the broadcast. Go Vipers. And, of course, Stephen and Barbara Springer, the parents of Vanderbilt Vipers head coach Drew Sanders' wife, Janet Sanders. So good to have them there. And uh, they're, they're the usually in the, in the press box. The first lady. The first lady. There you go. I like that. So we'll take a quick break and come back, and we'll get Zach's thoughts here before we head into the second half action. 28 to nothing, Vipers on top. Vanica Vipers football on the ABC Home Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. Viper football fans, we'd like to say congratulations to Four Points Rugby on their 2021 state championship. Four Points Rugby is built on an attitude of respect, sportsmanship, accountability, and character. If you're tough enough to be a Viper football fan, maybe you're tough enough to join Four Points Rugby Club. There's no rugby experience necessary. To join or get more information about Four Points Rugby Club, contact us at fourpointsrugbyclub at gmail.com. Come win another state championship with Four Points Rugby in 2022. Hi, Viper fans. This is Krista Spring, top sales agent with the HD Realty Team. Hi, this is Holly Dees, broker owner of the HD Realty Team. Together, Krista and our team have over 20 years of real estate experience. As busy current and former Viper moms, we love helping our Vipers and their families make moves happen on and off the field. HD Realty Team would love to help with your next move. Call Krista Spring or Holly Dees today. Go Vipers! Hashtag run it back. Go number 11. Hashtag water moccasin. 
When you buy or sell a piece of property, it helps to have a friend in the business. Independence Title will pick up the ball on your transaction and take it right across the goal line. Independence is locally owned right here in Austin with deep roots in the Vandergrift community. Independence is also the Austin Business Journal's number one title company. Work with the home team at Independence Title. Call 329-5299 or go to independencetitle.com. Considering buying, selling, or leasing property in the Austin area, Kim Crant Allison, realtor with Caldwell Banker Realty, has been in Austin for over 25 years and is a Four Points area resident, proud Vandergriff parent, and supporter of Viper football. Whether you'd like to learn what your home might sell for, purchase a vacation home, or invest in real estate, Kim is the perfect partner to help you achieve your goals. Contact Kim Crant Allison at cbrealty.com or visit kimsellsatx.com today. Kim Crant Allison, realtor with Caldwell Banker Realty. There's good, then there's mighty fine. Thank you, Mighty Fine Texas, for supporting the Vipers football. Enjoy classic Texas burgers how you love them. Red, yellow, white, or all of the above. Add a side of fries, onion rings, or if you're in the mood for a little of both, just ask for freeze. Don't forget to add a hand-dipped milkshake and make it a meal. Five locations across Austin, including the trailer, just around the corner at Four Points. At Champion Performance and Recovery, our mission is to deliver superior innovative therapies to accelerate athletic recovery, relieve pain, and elevate your well-being. With advanced treatments such as cryotherapy, cold laser, Normatec compression, sports chiropractic, and more, Champion Performance and Recovery can help you recover to become all you can be so you can do what you want like to do. For more information, give us a call at 737-212-7104 or visit us online at championpraustin.com. Welcome back to Cabanas Athletic Complex in Corpus Christi. Merle Bertrand, Hank Hudson, Zach Lassier, and uh, Zach, second half about ready to get underway. Quick thoughts here before the second half does get underway. You know, I hope we put some more points on the board, start start, start to separate and, and kind of show the state that we're that we're here to stay in the playoffs. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other guys get in the game and yeah. to keep to keep healthy for what what's shaping up to be a really big game next week. Yeah, that uh, you know there might be a little bit of football play next weekend somewhere. But uh, yeah, 42 to nothing, Westlake on top. Vipers got to take care of business. Can't get caught looking ahead. I'm sure coach isn't going to let him look ahead. He's not focused on what's going on at Westlake. He just wants to get through the second half and uh, keep building off a good performance. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, you know, Coach Sanders, he wants to keep that zero on the scoreboard. He wants to run up those points. So hopefully we'll achieve both of those and, and like, see some younger guys, like I said, and, and continue the domination in the second half. Sounds good. We'll see you after uh, see you in the post game, Zach. As Hank is back up here with us. 28 to nothing to score. Before we get to underway, a couple of emails to get to. Gordon Eccles. Writing in says, Go Vipers, number 74. Keller Eccles, grandparents watching from beautiful downtown Shirts, Texas. Thanks, guys, for the great coverage and broadcast of the game as the Vipers make their way out onto the field here to pick the Viper. Boy, awesome job by these Viper fans. Merle traveling three and a half or four hours yep. south to Corpus Christi. Like you said, Texas is a pretty big state, so had to drive some distance. Be a little shorter trip to the playoff game next week if yep, we manage to will. advance. I've uh, been on them, so I'm glad, I'm glad to see they showed out to, today here. I'll tell you what, I got another shout out here from all the way from California. So Grandma Shanna, Aunt Colleen, and Uncle Gene in Santa Maria, California for number 75, Brian Jeffries. All righty. Stephen O'Neill says, please give a shout out to my former third graders, Miles Coleman, Sebastian Cavett, and Gage Garrison, and Will Lyons. Mrs. O'Neill is so proud of you all. That is totally awesome. That is cool. Wow. Thank you very much on voiceofthevipers at gmail.com. Third grade teacher. That's amazing. I hope they were better behaved in third grade <laughs> than they are on the football field. <laughs> well, they're not, you know, they're not very well behaved out there when, the, right. when, they, when they snap on the leather. <laughs> but that's the way you want them. That's the way you want them. You exactly. want them feisty. I bet they, I bet Miss O'Neill had to ask, if, ask them to sit still more than <laughs> once. <laughs> I was just guessing. <laughs> What a great shout-out. Third-grade teacher. 
Joe Longsworth writing in says, thanks for all the coverage uh, for streaming the games. I really appreciate the coverage. Sending a big round three Texas high school football playoff. Shout out to number 60, senior Zach Zarin. Take us from Uncle Joe in Pensacola, Florida. Go Vipers all the way to the Texas State Championships. I like the way you're thinking, sir. And I'll tell you what, we are bi-coastal. Yes, we are. We have traversed the United States, California, and Florida. I didn't think we'd be doing video this week on Vipe, but I'm glad we are. Thank you to the Booster Club for making it possible. The kickoff is in the air. We are underway from Corpus Christi in quarter number three. Dropped inside the 10, picked up. Given ground back and breaks one tackle out to the 15-yard line and gets it out to about the 19-yard line. Pretty good return there for Justin Navarro after dropping it. Well, number 29, Braden Holter got there in a hurry. Uh, Merle, he was really down the field fast. And Connor Freeman there to clean up the mess. Lack of uh, fortuitous handling there by yeah. the... Vela. Gotta wonder if they get a little bit nervous or twitchy because you got some big guys pounded on them so far in that first half. This is a situation where they have not been in this year, Merle, down 28 to 0. They really cleaned house in that Rio Grande Valley district. Start coming into today, averaging 41.9 points a game, giving up just 8.5. Little rule reversal for the Sabercats here. Quarterback. Is going to keep it. Actually, it was a wildcat after the 27-yard line. Gained him about four yards on the play. That was a wildcat to number three. That's Bobby Garcia, a junior wide receiver, picking up five yards, second and five. Interesting. Looks like he's staying in the game, Merle. Trying something different. Garcia. Hand off left side. And this time stacked up at about the 24, maybe a yard pickup. For the other running back, Ted Galvan, just his second or third carry of the ball game, third and four. Sabercats are well coached, Merle. They're very organized, and you got to like the fact that you're trying something that's not working the first half. They've not been able to develop any momentum. Let's just let's do something else, change it up, yep. shake the bushes. Wildcat this time to Rivera off the left side, and he's going to pick up the first down and more out across the 35-yard line, maybe the 36. And it'll be a first down and 10 for Edinburgh Vela. They're having some success. Merle, the number three, coming in. Listed, Barbie Garcia as a wide receiver, a junior. Looks like he's taking some snaps at quarterback in practice this week, maybe all year. But they're staying with him in this first drive. Yes, they are. First down and 10. Garcia in the shotgun again, two receivers to the right side. Hand off left side, out across the 35, and out across the 40, the 43-yard line. This time on the carry, it was Ryan Clough again. Gate of about seven, so they're mixing it up a little bit. Well, this is a different look now because yeah. you've got a real running threat at the quarterback. So the Vipers are going to have to be wary and maintain that gap, gap discipline. Second down and two for the 43-yard line. Hand off Rivera, left side, across the 45, across the midfield stripe, and out of bounds across the way. At about the 48-yard line, that'll be good for a Vela first down. Vela's found something they like over on that left side, our defensive right. They're running. That's the second play in a row. They've run into the boundary from the from the left hash, running into the short side of the field. So they've they've seen something alignment-wise that they're trying to exploit and doing a pretty good job so far. Stepped out of bounds at the 50. So first down and 10 from the 50-yard line on the CCISD logo. Wildcat again, right side, and stiff arm inside the 45 and knocked down at the 43-yard line. Once again, it was Garcia on the carry to pick up six, second down and four. And that's a straight run all the way. Got a heavy set over to the right. Quarterback takes the snap, tucked it immediately, followed number 27, his running back, his elite blocker. Second down and three from the 43. Garcia up the middle, inside the 40 to the 35, and knocked down at the 34-yard line. We're going to see a timeout here in a minute, I bet. I think so. Vela's really come out in the second half in impressive form, Merle. Getting a decent push from their front five. Straight run. First down and 10 at the Viper 34-yard line inside of 10 minutes to go. Hand off right side Rivera trying to turn the corner. It's going to be dropped for a loss back to the 41-yard line. Not this time. Not this time. Crashing in backside for the Vipers was Tucker Harrison. That was Tucker Harrison. Yeah, yeah it, it was. was Tucker Harrison. It was Tucker Harrison. He's the defensive end on that right side, so just played that perfectly they do a lot of push and play or pull and play techniques that time number eight Harrison really set the edge hard 
First negative play of the drive. Hand off Huff, and he's going to be inside the 35, inside the 30. Put both hands on the football, dives down to the 23-yard line. Good for a Sabre Cat first down. Again to that left side. Seemed to be really focused on running left. It's working. Wipers will have to make the adjustment. First down to the 24-yard line. Hand off up the middle. And inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line. First time inside the red zone, I believe, this afternoon for Vela. That time it was Galvan on the carry. That's another six yards, five-yard five gain. Vela really showing their class. Merle coming here in the second half, 11-0. Yeah. and 0. Second and five to the right. Cutting it back up to the 15 and down at the 15-yard line. Going to bring up a third down and two. Vipers said they got the football, but officials right there to say it was down. So Bobby Garcia's come in and really giving this team a spark. Nice job. The best actor category on that one's Max Yule. Trying to come up and say they had the football. That's what you want to do. Third and two from the Viper 15. Garcia in the shotgun. Wildcat to Rivera trying to turn the corner left side. Going to have the first down inside the 10. And stacked up at the 8. It'll be first and goal from the 8-yard line. Well, really nice job on the perimeter that time. Blocking by number 10 from Vela. That is Ryan Clough. We've seen him do a, do a couple of different things. He's been a receiver, did a great job blocking. He's listed as an H-back on the, on the roster. Kind of a hybrid running back tight end. First and goal. Garcia inside the five, pushing towards the goal line. Did he get it into the end zone? He did. Touchdown, Edinburgh Vela. Wow. I'll tell you what, that's 10 plays in about 79 yards. Vela is not going to go quietly into that good night, Merle. What concerns me about that, Hank, is that with the exception of the one negative play, the Vipers didn't seem to have an answer for it. Now well, they'll adjust. Yeah. Well, it's that pace again. You know, it's a spread concept, Merle, but that was 10 running plays. Yeah. They didn't even look like they were going to throw the ball there. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. And it's good. So, 7 minutes, 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Edinburgh Vela on the board at 28-7. to We'll take a break, turn it back over to the offense. You're listening to Vanderbilt Vipers Football on the Austin Radio Network. It's important to preserve as many of life's memories as we can. Patty Jones Photography specializes in senior and family portraits, boutique weddings, and milestone events like graduations, proms, and more. Patty offers mini sessions that include five downloads, deluxe sessions that offer 10 downloads, plus specialized packages. Remember to mention Viper Football and receive 20% off a variety of prints. Visit pattyjonesphotography.com, 737-900-5662. Capture those special moments of timeless history for your family. Family. Wondered if Edinburgh Vela might try to cross up the Vipers with an onside kick, but instead they kick it to Rajon Middleton, who has a pretty nice return out to the 35-yard line. And that's where the Vipers will take over first down and 10. Got their nose bladed a little bit, Hank Hudson. Let's see how they respond. The teams will punish you if you don't come out firing on all cylinders. That's what Vela did in that opening drive. And handoff up the middle. The defense for the Sabre Cats gets a stop. A loss of a yard in the place. Alex Wood on the carry, second down and 11. I'll tell you what, here we go. Vela Sabercats says over there on their banner, loud and proud Sabercats. They've got a big turnout in terms of the fans that drove three and a half, four hours. Very impressive. Great return by number three Middleton there. He's handy. Yeah, he is. Kind of a utility player, yeah, if you will. Plays a little bit of everywhere. He's on the field now, lined up here on the near side. Vipers going from right to left in the home black jerseys with the white pants. Vela in the white jerseys and pants with the blue numerals, the black helmet. Buchanan dropping back, looking, firing over to the left side, trying to get it down to Beecham. Oh, oh interference. Oh, there's a flag. Yeah. yeah. The official couldn't get it out of his pocket. Two or three flags coming in that time. Yeah. That was probably a pretty good pass interference because I, Beecham was going to take that in. I, I think so. Number six there, 
Matthew Luna, who's done a good job in coverage. He yeah. got beat that time, and he grabbed the right arm <laughs> yeah. roll of uh, the receiver, Beecham, and almost he tried to reel it in with one hand. Yeah, he almost he caught got, it anyway. He almost caught it anyway. So I think you're right. I think that's a pretty good penalty. Remember in high school football, it's a 15-yard penalty, not a spot foul. So it'll be a first down for the Vipers. Ginger Young says, what outstanding play by the Vipers. How exciting to keep on moving up in the playoffs. Shout out to our Andrew Grants and Charlie Stanton and to Braden Buchanan, who's having such a fantastic season. Keep up the great effort from Ginger and Ira Young. Okay, we're seeing Coach Sanders right now. Merle right in front of us here on the hot bench, the defensive unit. Coach Sanders is coming over to deliver some coaching moments. Yep. Looked like he was pretty animated about what was going on there. Be interesting to see what the defense looks like coming out the next series after that pep talk. Officials taking their time getting this ball spotted here. Yeah. Polly Eagle says, shining loud from Steiner Ranch for number 25. That's Dr Mr. Draken. We've seen a lot of Drakens run through this program. Their dad, Mike, did a great job for many years volunteering for Pop Warner. We sure appreciate him. First down and 10, the Viper 49-yard line after the penalty. Play action pass, swing it out here to the near side. Incomplete, tried to get it to Coleman, overshot him just a little bit. That'll bring up a second down and 10. A lot of people thanking us for the broadcast. Thank the Vandergut Vipers uh, Football Booster Cup for making it possible for us to be on the horn as well as uh, streaming all year long here on Vipe and Flow Sports. It's a pretty big difference in penalty yardage, isn't it, Merle? Spot foul, get 15 yeah. yards versus getting it from the spot of the foul. So second down and 10 from the 49-yard line. Vipers moving from right to left. Play action pass again. Buchanan in trouble, and he is going to go down at the 42-yard line. And then a flag comes in late. Wow, we might have a little roughing, a little extracurricular here. Yeah. That might bail out the Vipers. Let's see what happens here. The Vela head coach looks... Apoplectic, so it may go <laughs> against him. That's he, exactly the call. Got a face yeah. mask, it looked like. Yeah. That yep. is a huge break for the Vandegut Vipers. No question. It was going to be third down at about 19. Instead, it's going to be first and 15 at about their 36-yard line. Yeah, that's a big, big penalty. Vela looks sharp coming out this second half. Yeah. Merle, 10-play drive to start things off. and Been very stingy so far. That time, a five-man rush. And what we've seen is Buchanan have... When he has ample time, like he's been getting all year, he can make you pay for it. But that time, he just did not have time to get comfortable back there. Great job. Vela's impressing us with their speed. We yeah. we heard something uh, from Zach Lucera about the comments from the sidelines. They're, they're, they're fast. They get speed all over the field. Post-possession foul. So it's at the 43. They mark it off from the spot of the sack, not the original line of scrimmage. Hand off left side. Witt hanging out of the football. Dives inside the 35 to the 34. That seemed to... Kind of ignite the Vipers a little bit. Second down and one. I think so. Point of attack was different there, Merle. Let's off tackle. Yep. We've been trying to run up the middle, which has been what we've been doing all year. That time Coach Mauser changed the point of attack, ran off tackle. Nobody home for the Vela Sabercats. Yeah, it might be playing to the strength of Alex Witt instead of uh, Ryan Shepard by going to the outside like that a little bit. Second and one. Give it to him again. Off right tackle this side. Big hole across the 30 down to the 26-yard line. Wow. What a job by Alex Witt filling in here for Shepard. Might be a little dinged up. Nice nice run right there. Number 23, Mr. Witt. Again, off tackle. I think Coach Mounders maybe figuring out the Rubik's Cube. Yeah. Found a, found a way to attack this Vela defense. First oh. and 10. Ball spot at the 26-yard line. Six and a half to go third quarter. Vipers up 28-7. Pistol formation, one receiver wide right, one to the near side. Now they move Witt to the right side. It's a run left. And there you go. That's exactly what it is. Left side, Off inside tackle. 25, stiff arm down to the 23. Nice pursuit there by the Vela defense. And on the stop was Nilsson Garcia, but about a four-yard pick, a three-yard pickup, second and seven. So what do you see again there, Merle, is that pre-snap action where you move a couple of guys over to the strength. You're broadcasting that you're running over there by doing that. However, it's just you've got more bodies right. in play over there. Vipers finding a way to exploit that off tackle play. You probably run that till they stop it. And some big boys too. Charlie Oliver lined up over there. Yes. Second and seven from the 24. Clock continuing to roll more than halfway through this third quarter. Buchanan, handoff, Witt again, left side. 
skips his way down to about the 21, maybe the 22-yard line. Gain of a yard, bring up a third and five. It's a, a little big bit play here. Yeah, there's a big play. A little bit of misdirection that time on the counter. That time he had a strength to the right side. Merle tried to cut back and run weak. Bela did a good job defensively. Just really impressed with their team speed, Merle. They've yeah. just got guys who fly around. Their linebackers are very, very active. A lot of foot speed. Third and six. Vibers trying to keep the drive alive. Buchanan empty back set. Sends Coleman in motion right to left. They fake the shuttle pass to him. He's in trouble. Fires it towards the end zone. That ball is caught but out of bounds by Grayland Spring. Now you got a decision to make. It'll be about a 22-39 yard field goal attempt. Into the wind. Well, we saw in the first half, Vela attempt a field goal from a similar spot. And I mean the wind really held that ball up. So, oh, but here they come. Uh, Hayden Arnold on for the long field goal. He kicked a 45 yarder last week. Arnold on the season, four out of six in the field goal department out of the hold of Hudson Lilly. Good snap and hold, good kick. Looks good from here. Did he get it through? He got he it. He did. Big time kick. Big <laughs> time kick indeed from 32 yards out into the teeth of the wind. The Vipers answer back with 4.59 to go. Boost their lead to 31 to seven. We'll take a break, see if the defense has made some adjustments. Vanica Vipers football on the Austin Radio Network. Y'all listen up. Let me tell you something about group meals from Rudy's Barbecue. It's got all you need for all the folks you gotta feed, smoke, meat, sides, and more. There's everything down to the tablecloth, just like the one that you see at the store. At a bridal shower, it's better than flowers. And a long business meeting, it'll pass the hours. It'll feed all the cousins at a family function. It's better than potluck at a church luncheon. Next time you need to feed 10 or more, call and order a Rudy's Group Meal. Next in line. The Austin housing market is growing faster than ever. Now is the time to give your local mortgage company a call. Eric Silvis with Guaranteed Rate can review your mortgage today. Buying or refinancing, let Eric Silvis and his experienced team of mortgage professionals guide you through the process so you can have a smooth, stress-free closing. With their competitive rates and local presence, they'll be your mortgage banker for life. Call them at 512-972-4818. Guaranteed Rate is an equal housing lender. Subject to credit approval, NMLS ID 555863, company NMLS ID 2611, NMLS, consumeraccess.org, Texas, licensed in Texas. Arnold's kickoff sails to the goal line up to the 5 to the 15 mm -hmm. and up to the 20, maybe the 25-yard line. That's where Baylor will take over first down and 10. With 4.53 to go in the third quarter, Vipers up 31 to 7. Merle and Hank here, Zach in the sidelines. Reese Trevino. Back in the studios. Reese Trevino, 32 down there quickly. Wow. Also Hudson Lilly, the backup quarterback who's on the kickoff coverage unit. Reese Trevino, third string running back on the kickoff <laughs> coverage team. And then we, we also noticed uh, during the break there that uh, our kicker, who's got a pretty big leg apparently, Hayden Arnold number 30, he's listed as a linebacker, Merle, and he kind of looks like a linebacker. So it's good to have that on your coverage unit as well. And look at this Viper defense respond. Uh -oh. They stay with number three, Bobby Garcia, in at the running back, and there were three or four Vipers in on the stop, led by Max Ewell. Yeah, so some adjustments you know are coming. Oh, yeah. Max Ewell was three yards deep into the backfield to snap the ball there. Hog tied the Vela quarterback. No gain of the play. Second down and 10 from the 24. Garcia in the shotgun again. He's got Rivera lined up behind him. Fumble. Fumble. Ball's on the carpet, and Garcia just has to fall on it. That'll be a loss of two, third and 12. I'll tell you what, man. That is a function right there, Merle, I think, of the fact that he hasn't had the majority of the reps all year. Exactly so right. your practice makes perfect, they say, and you're asking him to do something a little bit different been effective that opening drive but just took his eye off that snap yep clock continues to roll inside of four minutes to go vipers up by three scores 24 to 7. it would be three touchdowns and three two-point conversions but technically still a three possession game did you do all that math in your head Merle? <laughs> i did okay but we got timeout or a penalty that was a flag on the far side. It's going to be a procedure. That'll make it third and 17. Oh, ah, Vela. I use some of my UT math there. We're going to give a shout-out to my good friend, Burton Hackney, who's listening. Back from the 
safety, safe confines of Austin. He's the project manager at that Hutto Stadium that's under construction. Oh, wow. This is the guy we ran into. Yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I think I still have drywall dust in my equipment. <laughs> Third and 17. Fumble snap again. Ball's on the carpet. They pick it up and runs right into the Viper defense. Giant mm. on the spot. Griffin Schaefer was right there. Man, eight guys on the tackle and roll. Whew. Unbelievable. Oliver Yendo always getting up to the bottom of the pile. Schaefer a little shaken up, but he gets off the field. Looks like he's going to be fine. Fourth and about 14. You make a mistake against this Viper defense, they'll make you pay for yes, it. Yes, indeed. Vela going the wrong way on that drive. What a response. No question. Helped out a little bit by the mistakes, but still, they looked much better on defense that time. Vegas set to punt it away. High snap. Fields it at the five. Low spiral kick. Wobbles. Fair catch called by, and not, no fair catch by Coleman. And can't break free. They're going to give him four progress at the 46-yard line. But that's a great stand by the Viper defense. They'll take over first down and 10 with... 2.43 to go in the third quarter and a chance to do what the Vipers do, just kind of constrict the life out of the opponent. Oh, Miles Coleman, man, he's feisty. He is. That, uh, that feeling that punt when the Vela Sabercats are down there staring right in your face as you catch it. Didn't want to take a fair catch, Merle. He's going to try and nope. make something happen. He is the, he is a Neil Armstrong. There's That's only right. one Neil Armstrong. He's yeah. the first guy ever to run a punt back for a touchdown in Vandergriff history. Unbelievable. First down at the 44-yard line. Buchanan dropping back. Looking great protection. Fires over the center. Got great on the spring. Caught. To the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Vandergriff. One play, 55 yards. And the Vipers retain, regain control of the football game. Oh, man. That's an unbelievable throw and catch. What a great job by Graylin Spring right here, Merle. Extending out the ball just a little bit far, but he had to really open his stride up. And what you see there, Merle, is a receiver running downfield. You don't reach for the football until it's there. Right. A lot of times you'll see guys running with their arms extended, which slows you down. But Gray in the spring that time just did an amazing job waiting for that last second and plucking the ball out of midair. A very nice-looking catch. Touchdown, Vipers. Good snap and hold. Arnold with the kick. It is up. And it is good. 2.34 to go. 38-7. Vipers on top. We'll take a break and be right back. You're listening to Vanderga Vipers Football on the Austin Radio Network. It's never too soon to start teaching good savings and spending habits. Encourage early savings with a high-interest youth savings account from South Star Bank. And teach responsible spending in a safe environment with South Star Bank's youth checking account. South Star Bank youth accounts offer no minimum balance fee and no monthly service charge. Set your child on the path to financial stability. Open a South Star Bank youth account today. Learn more about southstarbank.com forward slash youth. Member FDIC. Dr. Martin Molina and his staff welcome you to Texas Family Physicians at River Place. Texas Family Physicians provides comprehensive family medical care for men, women, and children of all ages. They specialize in adult and pediatric preventative care, hypertension, diabetes, sports medicine, and seasonal allergies, just to name a few. They also offer impact certified baseline and post-injury concussion testing and treatment in office. Visit Texas Family Physicians online at texasfp.com. Texas Family Physicians at River Place. texasfp.com. Viper set to kick it away here up 38 to 7. Arnold, the right foot into it, and it's going to be fielded at about the five yard line to the 10 to the 15. Giving ground back to the 20, and he's going to get the corner turn, but knocked out the 22 yard line. Good pursuit again there by the Vipers. Well, Hank, I had to work, I had to work hard to come up with that UT math to make it a 24 three <laughs> possession game. The Vipers just blew it out of the water. Just blew point. it out of the water. But I'll tell you what, number 29. That's uh. Brady Holter, he's having a heck of a night. Braden Holter having a heck of a night on special teams. He's down there again. Number 11, uh, number 29, he's a junior. Great job putting a special in special teams. There you go. First and 10 for the, the Sabercats at the 23-yard line. With 2.25 to go in the third quarter, Vandergrift up now 38-7. to Handoff left side. Huff puts his head down and pounds it out to the 31-yard line. Gain of about eight. Bring up a second down and two. Well, they really are picking on that left side. Yeah. Finding something they like over there. Worked the first series that they have. They kind of self-destructed a little bit in the second series. They go Wildcat now to Pablo Rivera. 
Rivera going to take it off right tackle and gets it out to the 34-yard line. Just enough for the first down for the Vipers there to stack that one up. Again on the stop for Vandergift was Sterling Emerson on the play. First down and 10. Well, you saw a great job again there from number nine. Oliver just doing a great job playing his position in perfect fit, playing outside in. Rivera up the middle, stacked up near the line of scrimmage, managed to get it out to the 39-yard line. Pretty good run there for five yards. Didn't look like much, but five and yards later brings up a second and five. On that previous play, just a really good example of the technique there, Jackson Oliver, by playing that leverage spot. He you know, didn't go in for the kill, which could potentially open up something on the outside. He played that outside in. Sterling Emerson got it from the from the backside, who gets credit for the tackle, but Jackson Oliver doing exactly what he's supposed to do there to funnel the guy back into the good guys. A little break in the action there is that number 20 for the Vipers. That would be Alex Foster having to put the wheel back on. Now the officials talking it over. Uh, he's another guy. Merle. You just don't yeah. hear his name too much. But if you're playing in that position on defense, That's a you, good thing. you don't want to hear his name. Yeah. Yeah, when you look at the defensive stats, and the guys in the 19s and the 20s are getting all their leading tackles. That's not a good That's sign for their defense. That's not a good defense. sign. Not, didn't pick up what he said, the official. Vipers fans applauded, whatever it was. We've got the starting quarterback for Vela back in, Chase Campbell. Yeah, they wind the clock. 90 seconds to go third quarter, second down and five. Looks like they try to draw him off there with a hard count. Yeah. Viper's not having any of it. Hand off Galvan left side. He is going to be knocked down at about the 38, maybe across the 40-yard line. Going to bring up a third down and two. Great surge that time from the Viper defensive line. That's number 99, Damian Wimberly getting in there. Also the ever-present Tucker Harrison and Oliver Yendo. Inside of a minute to go, third down and two. Hand off Rivera, and he's... Hit hard across the 45-yard line, but picks up the first down. Jackson Oliver on the stop. 48 seconds of counting to go third quarter. This third quarter has flown by. Handoff up the middle. Rivera stacked up at the line of scrimmage mm. this time and pushed back. I see Sterling Emerson on the stop. Who don't I see it on the stop? Tucker Harrison. The guy Where's is the just everywhere. Harrison just has got the nose for the football, Merle. One of many on that Viper D. <laughs> they get to the football in a hurry. And they're in a bad move when they get there. That's right. Second and nine from the 47-yard line. Vela going from left to right for another 15 seconds here. I think they're going to let it run I down. I do, too. Not sure I quite understand that. You need all the plays you can get down by 31. But they're going to let it tick to the end. 36 minutes in the books in this one. The Vipers 12 minutes away from a possible rematch, or not rematch, but a possible matchup against the Wessex Chaparrales. We'll take a break, see if they can close it out. Vanderbilt Vipers football on the ABC Home and Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. Tomlin Family Orthodontics believes you should have the straight smile you deserve at any age. Dr. Travis Tomlin designs individualized care plans to create beautiful straight smiles for all his patients. Traditional braces to Invisalign, Tomlin Family Orthodontics uses cutting edge technology to make treatment effective and efficient. Great orthodontic care is only a few minutes away. For more information or to schedule your complimentary consultation, visit us online at TomlinFamilyOrthodontics.com. Texas collide inside at t Stadium, all battling to be crowned champions. Get your tickets now for the QIL State Championships. Be a part of this Texas tradition. Log on to cp.com. Handoff left side for Vela. Picks up about four yards on the play. That'll bring up a third down and six as we get it away here in the fourth quarter. Merle Bertrand, Hank Hudson here. Zach Lacero down to the sidelines. Vipers up 
38 to 7. Campbell dropping back, looking downfield. Hit as he throws it, and that ball mm. is incomplete. He might have heard some footsteps there. Maybe so. I'll tell you what, Merrill, that number 10, Slater Slotward, he is just a meat cleaver. Yeah. The play before that, he just delivered a big wallop. When you see that kind of thing as a receiver on the subsequent play, he was surrounded by black jerseys. He had Swartwood on the outside. He had Sterling Emerson on the inside. Pick your poison there. <laughs> if, you, if you catch that thing, which way are you going to run? It's the flip side of the <laughs> offense. So many weapons on the defensive side of the field as well. Yeah. Vegas set to punt it away again for Edinburgh Vela. High punt angles over to the sideline. Vibers is going to get away from it, and it's going to take a roll out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. And with 11.24 to go, that's where the Vibers will take over first down at 10. Pam Thompson riding in, says, good luck, Vipers. Play hard, boys. Shout out to twins number 14, Jason, number 9, Riker. Love you, Auntie and Uncle Bob from Mount Lake Terrace, Washington. Jason Riker Skoglund. The Skoglund boys. Sounds like a rock band. It does, doesn't it? Also a pretty good foot no football name. Yeah, it is. Comes off the, the tongue very nicely. Skoglund. So first down, Vandegar from their own 17-yard line, moving from left to right. Handoff up the middle, Witt. Done a great job here. Starting out platooning with Ryan Shepard. Has carried the football throughout since midway through the second quarter. Second down and 10. Vela's been stingy up in the middle. Not as big as some of the teams we've seen, but they do a good job clogging things up. Vipers in no hurry whatsoever. Two receivers wide left. Buchanan in the shotgun. He's got Witt to his right side. Buchanan got to keep it himself. Out across the 24-yard line. Picked up about seven yards on the play. Brings up a third down and three. That's a accumulation of offenses or a death of a thousand cuts. Yeah, yeah. You line up to that left. You're on the right hash. You line up power left. You bring over I think that was uh, Thomas and lined up over to the left in a pre-snap move, and then you get everything going that direction, and Buchanan just pulls that one and keeps it. The entire Vela offense was running to stop the run to that side. Buchanan takes advantage. Third down and three. One receiver wide left. Now they shift the formation over to the left side. And we're going to get a timeout. Timeout taken by the Vipers. I know you can't play scared, Hank, but... I had half to admit I was holding my breath when Brady Buchanan took off of that football. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. The other thing about him is he plays like a catcher. Right. You know, he's looking for he's <laughs> looking for contact every time he runs the football, which is not something you really want in the job description of the quarterback. But, <laughs> you know, you can't turn him off. I mean, he plays the way that he plays. He's just a super aggressive guy. You know, he throw, he, that's the way he approaches when he throws the ball, man, he really believes in his arm strength, and he's got it, got plenty of it. Kelly Holter riding in, says, Go, Braden Holter, love Mom and John. On Voice of the Vipers at gmail.com. Yeah, I'm not sure what they fed him for breakfast, but <laughs> they need a Wheaties and French toast. Robert Scott riding in, says, Late joining the game tonight, but it looks like the Vipers are taking care of business. Shouting out to Davis and Andrew Scott from Uncle Robert and Aunt Nancy from Kansas City, Missouri. Wow. We're everywhere tonight. Third down and a long three from the 23-yard line. Vibers moving from left to right. 10.04 to go up, 38-7. Hand off left side, and Witt going to push the pile out to the 27-yard line. Maybe the 28 looks like good enough for a first down. Well, I love that play design right there, Merle. You bring the very mercurial and speedy uh, number two, Miles Coleman, across the formation. Yep. All eyes on him because they've seen what he can do tonight. And then you just hand the ball off to Witt. Those linebackers just delayed that that half a second when because they have to keep keep a track of number two. First and ten from the 28. Inside of 10 minutes to go. Vipers milking the clock. In command of this one, 38-7. Hand off wit, left side. Nice hole again. We talked about it in the pregame, Hank. Just pounding, 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 and those holes get a little bit bigger as the game wears on. That's right. We've seen it 
all year, Merle, from this offensive line, and it's been a really excellent unit so far this year. Everybody stayed healthy. Got Ian Reed, number 72, the left tackle, 61. Gutierrez is the guard, 68, Ethan Barnard. So we got a timeout in the field, an injured Viper on the play. Is that 23? That is Witt. Yeah, that's boy. He's walking off under his own power, so... Who's coming in to back him up? Looks like number 32. Reese Trevino. Reese Trevino. He should be nice and warmed up. He's yeah. been running down on kickoff coverage. With Ryan Shepard already shaking up. The last thing he can afford, though, is to lose Alex Witt. Looks like he's going to be okay, but yeah. I'll take a look at him. He's not uh, suffering from any range of motion issues on either of his arms or legs, so. Looks like they're looking down low. Low snap, Buchanan's gonna pick it up and just try to get what he can get. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, back to the 30 yard line. We've been tremendously lucky, knock on wood in the injury front. You can't afford to lose people now. Well, that's a mental error there, get a low snap. Yeah. Buchanan had to eat that one and lose about five yards. But a wise decision, good game management, in-game management for Buchanan. No sense trying to do anything risky. Shepard came over to talk to Witt, looked at him. He's got his helmet on. He's walking just fine. So whatever's going on with him. You're up 38-7. I, I think yeah. you, you put in a backup here. Yeah. Ooh, that snap rifle back. Buchanan did a great job hanging out of the football. Now dumps it over here. What a great catch on the near sideline out to the 40-yard line. What a catch <laughs> by Jay Skoglin. Man, I'll tell you what. That's a, just a great play all the way around. I mean, Skoglin went up there with one hand. Yeah. And, I mean, just reeled it in. That snap about took Buchanan's head off. It got back to him so fast. Yeah. A little off target as well. I'll tell you what, Skoglin, you, you, as a receiver, Merle, you always want to go with two hands. Yeah. Every, if you can get one hand on it, you can get two. But in that instance, the ball got there so quickly, it was just an instantaneous reaction for Skoglin to go put that big paw up there and Great athletic play by number 14. I think it was about to head downfield and block because he thought Buchanan was going to run. Hand off Trevino. Both hands on the football. He'll push it out to about the 43 to the 44-yard line. Good effort there by the line. And Trevino, he picked up six yards on that play, second and four. Boy, you got to like that guy coming off the bench. Number 32, making the most of his opportunities. Nice-looking run. Yeah, I got to see him and Miles Coleman both when we were doing the JV and freshman broadcast last year. He can he can get it done. He can scoot. 7.20 to go, 38-7, Vipers in command. Boy, we're really taking some time here. Good in-game manager from the sideline, Coach Mauser. No hurry here. The clock's winding down to under 10 seconds before snapping, snapping the ball. Javinio lines up to the right side of Buchanan. And wiping out at the 45-yard line. That was actually, uh, yeah, it was Trevino on the carry. Pardon me. No gain in the place. It's going to bring up a third down and five. Maybe lost a yard that time. Viper's not getting in the huddle. No. Nope. They're just calling it from the sideline. you got three coaches down there, Merle. One with a yellow hat, one with blue, one with red. One of them is hot or active. The other two are decoys. Also got a placard down there, so... A lot of obfuscation by the Vandergriff offense and signaling in their plays. Obfuscation. <laughs> That's a postseason Man, word right there. I'm telling you. Third and long five from the Viper 45. Moving from left to right. Buchanan play action. Rolling to his right. Fires it over the right the left side of the field. Jump ball incomplete. Ran it out of my camera shot there, but falls incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down. Try to get it down the field to Coleman. Well, he was open early, but man, he's just so darn fast. <laughs> can't out, you can't out throw him. He's got that go home gear, man. Yeah. He just is lightning in a bottle. I remember reading how in the early days of air warfare, planes would shoot themselves down because they would shoot through the propeller. It's, <laughs> that's kind of like that throwing to Miles Coleman. You got to really lead him. Oh, yeah, that is a beautiful analogy. Shooting through their own propeller. Hudson Lilly with the rugby style punt. Angles over to the left side and field at the 15 yard line. And nothing doing. Beautiful job on the coverage. Clayton Moore, a lone ranger. High ho silver in a way. 
First one to get to Justin Navarro. He hung on to the Calvary arrived. And with 5.57 to go, the Viper defense come back on the field again. Very different feel this quarter. Things are definitely moving at a slower pace. Vela has slowed down. Vandergriff yep. slowing down deliberately just to try and take some time off the clock. But Vela has to feel very frustrated in terms of their offensive output because they've just really put up a lot of yards this year on yep. everybody they played. Campbell, handoff right side, Galvan, out across the 20. Puts his head down, pushes it out to the 25 to the 27-yard line. Gain of about nine in the place, second down and one. Well, you really get a sense for, uh, that, you know, why they're so successful. I mean, they've really got a – they have a plan and they're sticking to it. Yeah. Worked well for them all season, but they haven't faced a defense like this one all season. And off left side across the 30 out to the 32-yard line, maybe the 34. That'll be good for a five-yard pickup and a first down. Yep, so for two consecutive weeks, Merle, we've seen teams being taken out of their game. Steele was a very much a running power team. Vale, the same thing. Yep. Very frustrating day at the racetrack for Vale tonight as they just can't. They're getting some yards, just not, not being able to finish the drives. Rivera out of the Wildcat across the 35. Breaks one tackle and gets it out to the 40. Gets a nice push. Still pushing the pile forward all the way down to the 42-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. Second and two, but the clock continues to roll. Five minutes to go. Vipers up by 31. Well, at this at this pace, Burrell, the game will be over in another, you know, one more possession after this. Yeah. So the Vandergriff's very much content to let them have some garbage yards here. As the clock continues to run. And they came out and they were running a super fast pace to start the game, but that they've they've definitely slowed down. Campbell in the shotgun. Four and a half to go. Play action rolling right side and caught over the middle inside the 40 down to the 35-yard line. I think that's their first completed pass of the game. I think you're right. Hauled in by Jaden Tovar. And that'll be good for a, a Sabre Cat first down. Well, coached football team. They haven't, they haven't turned the ball over, but they've had a couple of penalties. Back to the bread and butter. Running the left that time. It's... Number one, Pablo Rivera. Yeah, senior running back, closing out his career. Second down and one coming up. Right now is about the time where all the defense starts stiffening up for yep. Vandegriff. Campbell in the shotgun. He's another senior. Better ball club here for Edinburgh Vale. They've had a heck of a season. And off Rivera, and going to get it inside the 25, down to the 21-yard line. That'll be good for a Sabre Cat first down. Nothing fancy, Merle. No. Nope. Lined up in the pistol, handed to number one. Sam Donato writing in says, please give a shout-out to Ian Reed and the Reed family from Uncle Sam of Chicago. And uh, thank you for the compliments, sir. Very much appreciated. Boy, I don't know what's wrong with number 72, Ian Reed. He is just an absolute animal. <laughs> He's nice enough off the field, but my gosh, he just, he turns into a complete terminator when he gets in between the hashes. Galvan out of the Wildcat, and he's going to take it inside the 20 down to about the 18-yard line. Pretty good for about a four-yard pickup second and six. I'm suspecting that we're seeing a lot of other players in the game right now. I haven't tracked it too closely here. Yeah, we've got number 44 in the game playing linebacker. That is M.D. Connor, junior linebacker. Second and six from the 18-yard line. Campbell, handoff, Rivera, left side, inside the 15, and beautiful bear tackle there. That's Connor Freeman. Connor Freeman, yeah. There's only one speed for number 24, and that's all go. He's uh, one of the mainstays for special teams. We always see him getting down there first on kickoff coverage. Kind of bear hugged Rivera there to the turf. Third down and a long two from about the 16 yard line. 2.20 to go. Hand off Galvan, another senior. He's going to be met in the oh. backfield and drop for a loss. Oh, thank you. 
Crashing in backside, trying to get a look at the number. Is that there's that 40 48. Brent Gillespie. Brent Gillespie, nice senior play. linebacker. Boy, nice looking play. Looks like they brought him on a stunt. And again, they, when the Vipers get a hold of you, Merle, yeah. you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Fourth and five from the 17. Play action. Campbell rolling to his left. Fires over to the left side. Caught to the five and knocked down there. Their second completion of the night. Second catch made by Jaden Tovar. It'll be first and goal with 141 to go. Number 20, Alex Foster. Right there on hand. The sophomore. Make sure they didn't get anything more, but they're knocking on the door here. Trying to get one more score in before the season expires for the Sabercats. They're going to Wildcat to Rivera. Going to take it off right tackle. Cuts it up inside the five. Pushing towards the goal line. Did he get it in? He did. Savela gets a pride touchdown with 1.30 to go. Nine plays, Merle, and they go about 80 yards. Doing what they do. Seven running plays, two yeah. passes, both complete. I'll tell you what, that tells you a lot about the character of the Vela program and yep. the Vela team. Uh, they were fully locked in there for that drive. It, you know, even though you're facing some of the backups for Vandergriff, they just did a really thorough, and meticulous job of driving the ball down the field there. So, well done, Vela Sabercats. Extra point attempt is up and good from Joe Juarez. And with 1.30 to go, 38-14, to 14, your new score. We'll take a break. We'll be back to close it out. Vandergriff Vipers football on the Austin Radio Network. Viper football fans, we'd like to say congratulations to Four Points Rugby on their 2021 state championship. Four Points Rugby is built on an attitude of respect, sportsmanship, accountability, and character. If you're tough enough to be a Viper football fan, maybe you're tough enough to join Four Points Rugby Club. There's no rugby experience necessary. To join or get more information about Four Points Rugby Club, contact us at fourpointsrugbyclub at gmail.com. Come win another state championship with Four Points Rugby in 2022. Now kickoff sails back to the 25-yard line. Fielder there and brought out to the 35-yard line. The Vipers will take over with 126 to go. Kind of thought maybe, Hank, that they might try an onside kick with the season on the line. But, you know, I think, they're there. I think they've uh, conceded this football game. I, I definitely think so. And I, I, you've got to say a lot about the clock management here from Coach Sanders and his coaching staff because, yes, you can see the touchdown there, but they burned four minutes right. off of the clock in order to do so. Uh, and, you know, now 126, you snap the ball two or three times and the game's over. Hudson Lilly in the game now, quarterback. Brain Buchanan's night is done. And handoff, stacked up the line of scrimmage, dropped for a couple yards, lost on the play, bring up a second down and 12. And, you know, I think you get the opportunity to rest some of your starters. You know, we've seen injuries late in the season be a factor for this Vandergriff Viper team in the past, so... I like the fact that we're giving, giving a little bit of a rest to some of our key players on yeah. offense and on defense. Saw a lot of guys get in on that, that last drive. Did a pretty effective job, but Vela managed to put, punch it in. Cole McQueen in the game and running back now inside of a minute to go. Second down and 12. Lily, handoff left side. And breaking tackles out across the 40, the 42-yard line. Pretty good run there. That's Trevino again. Trevino, yeah. Going to bring up a third down and about four. And I don't think they're going to snap this ball. I think they're just going to let it run out. We're getting the wholesale changes yep. on that offensive front. you got number 64 in the game. That's Josh Martinez. you got number 45, Will Province. They don't have to snap at 12 seconds to go. Number 71, I believe, is now playing center. That is Jacob Ray, a senior, one of the 42 seniors on this Viper squad, Merle. And here we go to the quarterfinals. 
And the clock hits zero, and the Vandegan Vipers are going to move on to the Elite Eight, the regional quarterfinals. Bring on the Wessex Chaparrales, 38-14, to your final score. What a performance. Gutty performance by Vela. Coming back out, bloody the Vipers' nose, but Vandegrift answered right back and uh, maintained their separation. They get the win here, 38-14. to Well, what a big game next week. You know, good test for this Viper unit. They came out and did everything they needed to do. They punched all of the buttons that they needed to punch. Yep. Took care of the ball. Mistake-free football. No penalties. Uh, and, you know, right next week, that's going to be a big game, Earl. I mean, it's it's Westlake. And uh, one, one thing is certain. As close as those two school, schools are in proximity, they yep. will be playing from now until kingdom come. We're going we're gonna to beat them eventually. Yeah, we are. Eventually. It's going to happen. So, I mean, I'm hoping for next uh, Saturday. I think the game's on Saturday. Is it? Is that right? It is, it's, it is a yeah. Saturday, yeah. And, you know, I'm going to do a little digging. I am not sure that anybody other than Lake Travis has played Westlake closer during the regular season, the two times that we've seen them in program history than Vandergrift has. So yeah. they're going to We're going to get them. But not fear. That's exactly right. We're going to get them. I mean, you know, Todd Dodge, I mean, he is he's a guy who his team is prepared to play every week because when you're on that kind of run and, and dominating teams, you look for a let up at some point. Yeah. But I mean last year they run they ran off a state championship with the largest margins of victory I think I've ever seen. For every single game they won by thirty or more points, so they're up fifty six to nothing in the fourth quarter of their game, so that one's all done but the uh, final the final score. Hopefully we'll get Ryan Shepard healthy. Hopefully we'll get Alex Witt back and healthy and uh, get ready to take on the Westlake Chaparrales. So let's take an extended break. When we come back, we'll hear from Coach Sanders a couple of times. First on uh, some of his sayings uh, that he talks about this week is a good one. And then Zach will get a chance to talk to him after he addresses the team. We'll get the stats, get Zach's thoughts, and be back for the postgame show from Corpus Christi. 38-14, to 14, your final score of the Vipers are moving on to the regional championship game against the Wessex Chaparrales next week. Granny Good Vipers football on the ABC Home and Commercial Services High School Football Radio Network. If you're considering buying or selling a home, when it comes to real estate, it helps to know the area. And that's where the Bartlett Real Estate Group comes in. Not only is the Bartlett Real Estate Group one of Austin Business Journal's top real estate groups in Austin, but the Bartlett Real Estate Group has been serving the Four Points community for more than 25 years. The Bartlett Real Estate Group is also a trusted supporter of Vandegrift High School football. For more info on the Bartlett Real Estate Group, visit them online at thebartlettteam.com or call them today, 512-418-1435. They're happy to start a conversation about your move. The Bartlett Real Estate Group, 25 years of serving the Four Points area. Dr. Martin Molina and his staff welcome you to Texas Family Physicians at River Place. Texas Family Physicians provides comprehensive family medical care for men, women, and children of all ages. They specialize in adult and pediatric preventative care, hypertension, diabetes, sports medicine, and seasonal allergies, just to name a few. They also offer impact certified baseline and post-injury concussion testing and treatment in office. Visit Texas Family Physicians online at texasfp.com. Texas Family Physicians at River Place. texasfp.com. You know the expression, put your money where your mouth is? It's like when you're really sure of something, you put your money where your mouth is? Well, anyway, at Doghouse, we're so sure we have the best hot dogs, sausages, and burgers in Texas. We're putting our money where your mouth is. Stop in a Doghouse Four Points for your free house dog, sausage, or burger after texting VIPERS to 833-440-1100. VIPERS to 833-440-1100. Doghouse, absolute worst. When you buy or sell a piece of property, it helps to have a friend in the business. Independence Title will pick up the ball on your transaction and take it right across the goal line. Independence is locally owned right here in Austin with deep roots in the Vandergrift community. Independence is also the Austin Business Journal's number one title company. Work with the home team at Independence Title. Call 329-5299 or go to independencetitle.com. Iconic Rem Power is yours. From crew cabs to heavy duties, it doesn't matter what kind of new Ram you're looking for, we've got it at the Niall Maxwell Super Center. Hi, I'm Mike Wilson, and the most awarded truck on the road is the Ram, and it's been named the back to back to back Motor Trend Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And we've got truckloads of new Rams here in stock and more on the way during Niall Maxwell's Ram Power Days, all at the Niall Maxwell Super Center or online at NiallMaxwellSuperCenter.com. 
The Austin housing market is growing faster than ever. Now is the time to give your local mortgage company a call. Eric Silvis with Guaranteed Rate can review your mortgage today. Buying or refinancing, let Eric Silvis and his experienced team of mortgage professionals guide you through the process so you can have a smooth, stress-free closing. With their competitive rates and local presence, they'll be your mortgage banker for life. Call them at 512-972-4818. Guaranteed Rate is an equal housing lender. Subject to credit approval, NMLS ID 555863. Company NMLS ID 2611. NMLS, consumeraccess.org. Texas, licensed in Texas. There's good. Then there's mighty fine. Thank you. Mighty fine Texas for supporting the Vipers football. Enjoy classic Texas burgers how you love them. Red, yellow, white, or all of the above. Add a side of fries, onion rings, or if you're in the mood for a little of both, just ask for free. Don't forget to add a hand-dipped milkshake and make it a meal. Five locations across Austin, including the trailer, just around the corner at Four Points. Listen up, people. Going extinct is a bad thing. You're headed for a climate disaster, and yet every year governments spend hundreds of billions of public funds on fossil fuel subsidies. You've got a huge opportunity right now. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity's big chance. It's time for you humans to stop making excuses and start making changes. Don't choose extinction. Thank you. Hi, Viper fans. It's the Viper Minute, the chance to just kind of connect and, and learn a little bit more about the Viper program rather than just what appears on Friday night. Uh, when we go out and, and, and uh, play a football game. You know, we have our four hallmarks, our three questions, our two results, and we also just have some guiding guiding statements that we use all the time uh, that kind of just, they say more than just the words that is in the quote. And so this one this week is called No One Most Important, No One Least Important. And I want to give credit to Coach Jimmy Keeling, my college coach who taught me this, but this was used every day to teach us that, you know, for example, the quarterback gets a lot of press. The head coach get a, gets a lot of publicity. But no one, no one is more important than anyone else. But on the flip side, no one's least important than anybody else. So that means the people that outside might say something like, the freshman that's not playing at all would be least important. That's not, that's not true either. Everybody has a place and everybody has a role. And then one of the examples that I use uh, to teach this is I talk about our middle school coaching staff. And then I ask, you know, Coach Simmons, a lot of the listeners will be will recognize his name. He's been the middle school coordinator at Canyon Ridge Middle School for a decade or more. And he's influenced so many young people. And so I, I ask a simple question. Raise your hand if, if you think consider Coach Simmons one of your uh, main influences on your life. And, of course, so many hands go up. Left on the clip. And I'd say, but the media or people on the outside will say, well, the NFL coaches or Why college coaches are bigger time. But yet, this middle school coach was influential in your life and probably will be the rest of your life. And so we just, we just use that as an example of, you know, there's just, if you can realize that everyone on our team, everyone in your group is all important, it makes it a lot better, a lot easier, and you never take anybody in your in your life for granted. So that's what no, mo- no one most important, no one least important means. Not a good five percent coach to stand. I forgot all about that one, Hank, until he started talking about it. And again, the fireside chat doing the interview by phone this week. Uh, but uh, thirty-eight to fourteen, the Vipers with the win, and Hank Hudson, the Vipers are going to move on to the regional finals for the fourth time in program history. They're one and two. They won the first time in twenty fourteen, lost it in twenty fifteen. Of course, lost last year in a bit of a mild upset, I guess, if you will, the Hayes Rebels at the time and. Get a chance to take on the Wessex Chaparrales. It doesn't get any easier this time of the year. No, it doesn't, and that's a big game. Yep. What else can you say? The superlatives uh, will not be enough to describe the build up to that game. <laughs> uh, there, there's just going to be a lot of emotion. You know, geographically, they're one of the closest high schools to us in the city of Austin. Uh, they're the big kid on the block. The last two times we played them, like you said, Merle, uh, that's the, the be- best regular season game that they've been given. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the level of competition. So on paper, it's the Westlake uh, Chaps. I mean, it's the Chaparrales, and they've got a machine over there led by Todd Dodge. And on paper, you know, they're going to be favored to win that game. But they play the games for a reason. That's right. And so uh, the Vipers will be mel- well motivated going to that game. It's not going to take too much to get them motivated f- to play that football game. Can they continue to operate in the way that they have over the fast, past few weeks where they play mistake-free football in terms of turnovers? No real penalties tonight that cause us any trouble. And they're winning all three phases of the football. So you're going to go up against a Westlake Chap team that's going to be just as good as you 
uh, or not, if not better, in, on some of those spots. So you're going to have to play a really good, disciplined football game next week. Did we have any penalties tonight? I don't think so. I don't so. remember any. I don't think so. We had the one uh, turnover, the interception, which was basically a long punt down to the six-yard line. Uh, but that was about it. Yeah. Well, and that was a possession turnover. Right. I mean, you throw that thing down there, it's just like a punt. You know, mm-hmm. they get the ball on the six-yard line at the very next play when you nearly got a safety. So, you know, that's as, as good as a punt. I mean, so, you know, going into next week, you know, what are the Westlake Shafts going to be looking at? You know, Braden Buchanan was 12 out of 21 for 310 yards and five TDs. Uh, so we didn't see too much uh, from uh, Shepard in terms of uh, a carry count. He looks okay, but it looks like we're going to be heading into that game with no significant injuries uh, on the offense or defensive side. We've got everybody healthy. And I can tell you, the last couple of times we've been this far in the playoffs, there's been some injury concerns late yep. in the seasons that have it's handicapped them a bit, you know, as soon as last year uh, when Shepard was out. So I like the way that they managed this football game. I, I really like it because – they took the, uh, They basically packed up the tents and were ready to go home. Uh, you know, about halfway through the third quarter, and just started bleeding the time out of the game. Right. So great job, uh, game management, clock management. You know, the the preparation is going to start immediately for next week. I mean, they've I think they've already got the game site, location, date, and time lined up. So yeah, Zach's got the scoop on that one. So I'm going to let him. <laughs> yeah, bring, he, he, he did started. all the hard work. So I'm yes, going to let him indeed. break it to you folks. But uh, yeah, tw- 38 to 14. The Vipers now improving to. 12 and oh no 13 and 0 13 and 0 on no 12 and 1 11 and right yeah. eventually it was that UT math again yes See, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't I think you were you were 100 percent up until that moment I should have just <laughs> quit while I was ahead 38 to 14 Vipers with the win and uh I'm kind of looking down the sidelines waiting for Zach to make his way up here I, he's uh yeah he's, he's taking I his see time making his there. way back up but I was kind of looking for Ryan Shepard looking for Alex Witt to make sure that they were okay I think they're okay I think uh, I, think I think so I think uh, they just kept Ryan Shepard out as a precaution. May have been a little dinged up, you know, and uh, Witt was doing a great job till he went down early, but he seemed to be okay. So we'll see what Well, you look at that brings. game that, that game last year against Hayes, highly physical football game. Yeah. You know, what kind of difference would it have made last year if you had your number one running back healthy for that game? You know, we don't know. Don't know. But, uh, it, you know, you'd rather would have had him going into that contest than not. And so, you know, a lot of different weapons on display again tonight for the Vipers. You know, Buchanan throwing five touchdown passes is something that's going to catch the, the uh, catch the headlines again. He had a big week last week. He's got a big time Division One arm. Yep. Uh, for baseball, we know, but I you know you have to believe that he's going to be getting some college football offers here with some of the throws he's executing. And I tell you what, uh, none more impressive than the throw for the touchdown, the only touchdown in the second half. Just an absolute highlight reel touchdown pass to. Grayland Spring yep. for 55 yards out. Uh, you know, beautiful throw, but also a great extension and catch by Grayland Spring on that play. That thing will that thing will make the highlight reel. And again, just contributions on all sides of the football. Multiple guys catching passes. Multiple guys in the backfield. Braden Buchanan running it, throwing it. About the only thing we didn't see tonight was a Reese Beecham touchdown pass. But uh, he had a couple of nice catches on his own. And Vipers get the big win, 38 to 14. Why don't we step aside? And uh, when we come back, hopefully we'll hear from Zach Lucero again. Hopefully uh, Zach had a chance to catch up with Coach Sanders. We'll get that interview played for you and uh, be back here for more of the postgame show. Vipers with the win. On to the regional finals next week, 38-14. to Redding and Vipers football postgame show continues on the Austin Radio Network. I've got him for two touchdowns. Courtesy All Car right, Washes man. and much, Very much efficient, more. Aaron Come Hernandez. by and visit us today to experience the Cobra <laughs> commitment for yourself. Cobra Cadillac. <laughs> American luxury has evolved. Well, visit CobraCadillac.com and like us on Facebook. Aaron Hernandez Bring really knows how to get things to done. Big Sean and yeah. little time at the Big yeah, Red no Express problem. Car Wash. <laughs> Choose from one of our four exterior car washes or go unlimited and wash as often as you want with one of our monthly wash plans. In our complimentary lot, you'll find free vacuums, towels, glass cleaner, a mat wash station, and more. Protect your investment with our superior cleaning and protectant products such as Rainex and Simonize Hot Wax. We're always ready to provide you with friendly service where your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed. Stop by the Big Red Express Car Wash today. We'll be waiting for you. Family time, anytime. Always worth every dime. 
on our way to chicken eat unbelievable sweet tea extra cinders they're the best not to mention all the rest chicken tea is the place to go for all of us in the know plenty of sides to make a meal chicken tea is for real follow me to chicken tea gotta have their sweet tea Hi, I'm Daryl Foytick, owner of Advantage Austin Properties and a proud sponsor of our Vandergriff Vipers football team. Advantage Austin Properties is your Four Points area experts for all your real estate needs. 512-418-0594 or visit livinginfourpoints.com for more information. And if you mention this radio ad, Advantage Austin Properties will donate $500 to the Viper Football Team Booster Club with each successful real estate transaction. Advantage Austin Properties. Real care, real performance, real advantage. Tomlin Family Orthodontics believes you should have the straight smile you deserve at any age. Dr. Travis Tomlin designs individualized care plans to create beautiful, straight smiles for all his patients. Traditional braces to Invisalign, Tomlin Family Orthodontics uses cutting-edge technology to make treatment effective and efficient. Great orthodontic care is only a few minutes away. For more information or to schedule your complimentary consultation, visit us online at TomlinFamilyOrthodontics.com. Texas Malibu is your exclusive dealer for the world's number one water sports towboats, Malibu. Now with locations in Austin and Texas Ski Ranch in New Braunfels, we cover all of Central Texas. Come see the enthusiasts at Texas Malibu in Austin or Texas Ski Ranch in New Braunfels or give them a call 512-244-9777 or visit them online, texasmalibu.com. That's 512-244-9777. Then get on the water with your crew and make memories that'll last a lifetime. Welcome back to Cabanas Athletic Complex in Corpus Christi, Texas. Vandica Vipers with a big win tonight, 38-14 to over the Edinburgh Bayless Sabercats. Merle Bertrand and Hank Hudson here to wrap it up. Uh, Zach Lacerra will be joining us in just a moment. I'm not sure if he got lost on the way back. I mean, the <laughs> field, Hank, is about 50 yards away. I'm not I quite mean, sure we're taking Zach so long. but This has been an enjoyable place to watch a football game. Yeah, I love being close like this, especially with our fans right below us here. That mm-hmm. makes a big difference. So 38 to 14, the final score. Going into the next week, it, I mean, you have to start talking about the things you know, that the Vipers are doing well to give them a chance in that football game against a team that's going to be favored, the Westlake Chaparrells. The multiple attack points that they've got on this offensive unit. Tonight, seven different guys caught passes. You had uh, four, five different guys catch a, uh, four different guys catch a touchdown pass. So there's a lot of different ways to distribute the ball. We've got two guys carrying the ball that are very effective in, in Witt and uh, Ryan Shepard. So a lot of different options on offense. That gives, that gives defensive coordinators uh, a fit yep. when you've got to try and stop so many different things. So we've got some opportunities there. On defense, uh, we've got one of the better defensive units in terms of uh, statistical production that Coach Sanders has ever had, and some big name players, you know, who are going to be playing at the next level. I mean, you've got Max Ewell, you've got Jackson Oliver, you've got Tucker Harrison. These guys are they're fast. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, a very, a very uh, the grand the grand master, shall we call him, uh, of, of, of defensive coordinators, a grand chess master. He just does a tremendous job of scheming and preparing. His, his units on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then special teams, again, we were winning that element of the game every week. So you know this is going to be a, a contest that they'll be up for. It's just can you play that flawless football game? You're going to need it next week. That's exactly right. And, and you corrected me while we were break. I mentioned the only I – I think I said the only thing that Reese Beecham didn't do was catch a touchdown pass. He caught two. He didn't throw a touchdown yes. pass is what I meant to say. That's about the only thing that he didn't do tonight. And But, yeah, but you're right. And I, I mentioned that uh, to Coach in, in the pregame interview. Do they do stuff just to give the coaches, the opposing coaches, some headaches? You know, I don't think that's the case. I was kind of kind of tongue-in-cheek, but, man, if I were a defensive coordinator or an offensive coordinator looking at the other side of the ball – I would want to play anybody other than Vanegar Fire right now. I I totally agree. I totally agree. They they manage every week, Merle, uh, nearly every week, to get significant pressure on the quarterback with only three guys rushing, three or four guys rushing. You know that's a problem for a, an offensive coordinator to try and scheme against that because that means you've got you know seven or eight guys in coverage. Right. And normally when you're bringing heat to apply pressure to the quarterback to get him to throw quickly, there's usually at least one hot receiver. If you're bringing you know five guys on the rush and a hot receiver who's somebody going to be open early. Uh, and, you know, good quarterbacks and good coaches are good at finding and isolating that 
that player. So if you can continue to get pressure on the quarterback in the passing game with three and four guys, I think that that bodes well uh, for the Vipers. You know, it's just a big game. I mean, yeah. heavens to Betsy, it's the, it's the Westlake Chaparrales. So I'm I'm really excited already for see how that comes out. Yeah, they're up 56 to nothing. Last report we had, so Westlake will win that one. And of course, uh, Lago Vista defeating Edna today, 33 to 29. Cedar Park fell to Katie Patel, 65 to 14. It was Cuero over Wimberley, 36 to 26. Lake Travis getting a nice win over Laredo United South tonight, 35 to 19. I know Liberty Hills in action, and I don't see they could get in the way. I think it's seven or seven thirty. So the Panthers back in the postseason again, but. You know, the game's getting fewer as we move out later on into the, into the playoffs, but the, you know, the impact, the intensity, and everything else just picks up. No question about it. I was so impressed with Vela tonight. I mean, they, they're down 28 to nothing at half, yeah. and they looked like they were well beaten. And they came out in the second half and said, hey, you know what, we're here to play. We were 11-0, and and we're going to come out and give you our best shot. You know, that opening drive drove down, scored a touchdown, and, you know, looked really impressive on that drive. And then you know, the Vipers – the game was kind of over midway through the third quarter on their second drive, I thought. Yep. When, it, when the Vipers got them in a three and out quickly, and the, 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 the air kind of came out of the stadium, and you kind of felt that the Vipers were packing up the gear and ready to go home, letting all the, uh, the time run off. And the, and the, you know, in the second half, we only had those four possessions uh, versus seven in the first half. And it, it's just a difference in tempo, and I think a really good job of game management, clock management by the Vipers coaching staff. Yeah, I agree. Of course, you know, like like I said, they scored seven. Vipers answered with the field goal, uh-huh. and then uh, Vela, you think they stayed in the same formation that they had so much success in. Fumbled a couple of snaps, got a penalty, and never got back in the game. They got the three and out, and uh, like you said, it was pretty much over from there. Well, Zach has made his way back up here, but before we hear from him, he had a chance to catch up with head coach Drew Sanders just a couple of moments ago. Let's hear what coach had to say about tonight's big win. <laughs> All right, Coach, big win over Vela here to move on here in the playoffs. What are your thoughts, Coach? That's a pretty complete, pretty complete game overall against a really good team. You know, they're 12-0. and um, So we're just proud of, proud of the guys' effort, um, like our halftime lead. You know, they came out and said we were just going to run it, and they had a really yeah, nice drive. And then our defense came back and answered the call, that second drive, and shut them down three and out. So impressed with that. And offensively, immediately went and scored to long touchdown to Grayland. So played good complimentary football tonight, solid special teams. We're excited to be moving on to the fourth round. Thank you, Coach. Randy Gaffiper, head coach, Drew Sanders with his thoughts as the team uh, qualifies for the regional ch- uh, finals for the fourth time. Zach Lacerra has made his way back up here. And, uh, Zach, before we get to your thoughts in the second half, you've got the breaking news. you got the scoop. What do you know for next week? Yeah, Coach Sanders was able to break some news to the to the guys that they're down there. That's why they got that that pop during that little meeting with the coaches. So next week, tentatively set for 2 o'clock on Saturday at DKR Memorial Stadium in uh, downtown Austin. What should a dump. Be fun. Yeah, I know. There. It should be fun, man. It well, be that's fun. a venue that's appropriate because it's yeah. a big game, and I think that all parties recognized, you know, this is a, the battle of 360, if you will, yeah. in Austin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's just a big football game and, you know, deserving of a venue like that. Yeah, it, it should be fun. I mean, we've, we've gotten to see some cool venues, uh, McLean Stadium a few years back, and driving to to, uh, to Rat- Ratcliffe Stadium and right. and, uh, and all the way in San Angelo, San Angelo Stadium. But this is this is one that I'm sure um, the, the kids have, have probably dreamed about playing at and, and being a part of a game there. And even some kids, it's, it's just a big deal for them to go watch a game there. So for them to be able to take part, the, the, not only the starters, the, the seniors, but the JV guys that they bring up for this playoff right. run, to, for them to get to experience something like that, it's, it's – It'll be something that Viper fans will remember for a long time. Heck, that's going to be fun for us. I haven't been there since that place had the old AstroTurf when I went to school. So oh, it looks wow. a little different since the, since my, my days there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I, what's your prediction? What's the over-under on the crowd prediction for that one? It, it should be fun. You know, it, it, it depends. It, it, it kind of depends on, on the, the Lake Travis and Bowie game, too. True. If, yeah. if, if they are able to schedule it around that or, to, or I haven't seen the score, but if they're able to, to both play there, that, that place will be packed. That place will have – that place will have all of Austin coming together and watching a game at DKR. With the, with the Texas season so far, that might be the most fans they've seen there in a while. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bowie, Bowie plays at 7 o'clock tonight, correct? Is that yes, right? They got, the, they got the nightcap. So, yeah, the yes. horn with the triple header today. Got to like that. The matinee with Lake Travis, us in the afternoon, uh-huh. and uh, Bowie getting the nightcap. Well done. Well done by the horn. So what was the second half like, Zach? You know, it was a lot of the same. You know, I think um, Hank, you mentioned this when we were on our way up here, but just the tempo and speed that that Vela is going to go is, is going to give any team any team problem, especially a, a team that plays so hard on defense. 
um, throughout the first half to maintain that to maintain that shutout. It's a lot of energy spent, and, and for them to kind of find something that was working and just run that same formation again and again with that kind of direct snap uh, to, to number one in the backfield. Um, so obviously they're a little frustrated to give those points up. To give those points up, um, but after that, I mean, the offense has been so was so methodical and so consistent throughout this whole game. Um, even the, in that in the halftime interview, when, when Coach Sanders uh, was kind of talking about the sputtering of the offense, even then they were still able to put multiple touchdowns on the board in, in a half. So um, a, a bunch of the same, and then able to get those younger guys in, getting to see guys to take a rest, like Ryan Shepard and, um, and 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 Alex Witt took a hard hit and came out of the game. But hopefully, you get to have him rested up because right. he didn't play majority of the fourth quarter. So I mean, if you can rest not only your starters but the guys that kind of spelled that spell those guys getting a rest. Uh, I think that's huge um, for for going into a, such a huge matchup. So the sideline was fun. The sideline was electric. Uh, it has been since since after the Round Rock game, really. So uh, hopefully this team can kind of maintain that. Um, all, all of the guys that travel on the roster, the, the underclassmen, the, the JV guys, are, are such a huge part uh, of keeping the, the sideline and, and the crowd energized. So they do, they've done such a good job, and hopefully we can continue that to next week. And a kudos to the crowd. Hank talked about it earlier, and I've been kind of on him a little bit for not traveling. Well, this is a long road trip, and the Viper fans turned out in force today. What was, could, could you, does it make a difference? Can you really hear them down on the sidelines, especially in close quarters like this? You know, it, it was tough because because uh, as much as the Vandegar fans brought, uh, I think we have we had all of the Valley uh, across from us uh, <laughs> yeah. on, on the other side. <laughs> Uh, but no, this this is one of the best showings, one of the furthest games, but one of the better showings for yeah. for the Vandegar no fans. Question. So huge shout out to all these parents um, that 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 are able to support their kids and have set up their kids for all the success that they've had this season. Yeah, well, full credit to, to Vela for bringing that huge contingent because what you had is a proper cauldron. Uh, you know, <laughs> it gets nice and hot in there with the fans going. Uh, very competitive. You know, these seats that we're in here, we're really close to the fans. So. Uh, you really got a uh, more emotionally involved in the game when, uh, from this vantage point. I really en enjoyed a quality football game. Vandergrift did everything that they needed to do. Yep. Got up big in the first half, and then, you know, Zach, we were talking about before you got here. They they kind of started packing things up and really drawing the game out time wise. They were just ready to get off the field, I think, and you know, make sure nobody else got injured. Got Shepard off the field. You got Witt off the field. Just a really great job of uh, game management and clock management by this Vipers coaching staff. Man, he's so he's so good at that, isn't he? Yes, he I is. Mean, yes, he there's, is. There's games, that, especially you play with Coach Sanders, so you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to, to hold the team to to a, a fairly low amount of points. But one, once they kind of are in a position that the game is won, they're able to to draw out that clock that sometimes we've, we've seen. Only two or three possessions in a whole quarter. Yeah. So, so shout, Coach Mauser is, is so good at milking the clock, and and which has been a huge part of, of Coach Sanders and this program's success is being able to secure those wins and then and then take them home with you. Well, before we go, I want to get everybody's final thoughts here, but I do want to thank uh, Laura Peck and Liz Bernard and everybody with the Vandega Vipers Football Booster Club. And we've been able to bring you the video this year on uh, first on Flow Sports during the regular season on Vipe in the postseason. We wouldn't be able to do it without all of those folks. I can't imagine that we'll have video next week. I think the Federation will probably take over for a game <laughs> like that. So Probably. Uh, but, uh, yeah, thanks to all those folks. Thanks for everybody that, that wrote in uh, on the email, voiceofthevipers at gmail.com. That'll still be working next week. But final thoughts before we get ready. we got to start doing our own prep here for West Lake. Well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't get any bigger than this moment right yep. here. This is a huge game for Viper football, you know, historically speaking, you know, for the, the the story that's going on this season it's a big game. You're playing a defending state champion West Lake Chaparrales who are, you know, a nationwide brand in terms of what they've been able to do with the success of their program. Vandergriff's going to go in there and they're going to compete. And you know, again, if they put it all together, you can win that football game yep. if you get it all firing on all cylinders. You know, you have to play mistake-free football, which is something that this team has done so far. So I'm just super excited right now even thinking about it. Yeah, Max Yule said on the sideline, he came up to me and said, if we play like we played in steel, we can win that game. And I, and I truly believe that. that That's as mistake-free of football as yeah. you can do. That's as complimentary. All the coach sayings that you that you want to say, they did that against steel, and, and it will be that type of task against Westlake. But it's, it, it's going to be fun, man. It's, it's, it's a cool sentence to sign off with and say, see you at DKR. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, Vail season comes with in 12-1. and one. Congratulations to the Sabercats on a fine season. Uh, the Vipers are going to move on. That's going to do it for us tonight. And as uh, we all said, we'll be back with you next Saturday for the Regional Region 4 Championship game against the defending state champion, Westlake Chaparrales. From our broadcast partners, Hank Hudson, along with Zach Lacerra, our producer and sideline reporter, Aaron Anderson did a great job back at the Austin Radio Network studio. Scott Schofter, we get another week. Week. My name is Murrow Birch and signing out from Cabanas Athletic Complex in Corpus Christi, where the Vandegut Fibers had defeated the Vela Sabre Cats 38 
to 14. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the leftover turkey. We'll see you next Saturday for a chance to advance to the Final Four. Good night, everybody. It's never too soon to start teaching good savings nice and Thank spending you. habits. Youth checking account. South Star Bank youth accounts offer no minimum balance fee and no.